Sorry, right. dogs. <laughs> oh, there you are. Back to mob view. Ready to rule again with an iron fist. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I guess I didn't share that. I guess not going to purchase swords. Oh, man. Kept waiting to bring out the kitten for you guys. She looks full black, but she's not. The very tip of her tail has is white. They're barking at a mysterious stranger who is at the end of my driveway. You know, my wife. The woman who raised them. All right, so I'm going to do an audio check real quick. I heard both me and Val. Okay, and can you hear me? Yeah, my mic test was me complaining about dogs. Yeah, you're a little okay. quiet, but yeah. I'm quiet. Okay. Yeah, you're very quiet. It was almost like an echo on your voice. Yeah, weirdly. Don't got voice mod on or anything, do you? Okay, how about now? Couldn't. Oh, okay, yeah. You're back to normal. Just voice mod being. Voice fucky. mod. Yeah. It's so good, but it also fucks so much up. Well, that's the audio working, though. Good. All right. So, I know it's been a minute. So let's do some recapping here. And uh, as for posterity's sake, we've moved to a new time zone. We're now doing this Mondays, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, we might be running sh slightly shorter sessions because... We, our ability to go over has been reduced, so uh, once 8 o'clock rolls around, we got to stop so Suzanne can run to the uh, run to work. Proud of you, so, Suzanne. And for, for all intents and purposes, all my streams now will be starting around 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, So, because that's when we wake up. Finally, a reasonable time. <laughs> Finally, Bill can be <laughs> here. Uh, it's been it's been really crazy. Got new glasses. I don't even know if you guys can tell. They're just like the old glasses, only no, black. Completely normal. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're just the same as the old ones. Only they're black rather than brass. Well, hopefully they help your eyes. So. Yeah. They are better, but they're not the best they can be yet. My eyes have to adjust. Of course. Oh man, guys, I gotta go. I just got a Twitch stream notification. <laughs> Sorry, it's a, it's a friend that's really gonna support them. I feel that. I respect the grind. Yeah, uh, like honestly, to you guys, they just would not look any different. So, but they they are different. I just put the other ones on, and uh, they're blurry. So that means something has changed. Yeah. Uh, and then like, it's been rough. So I, I stopped streaming like mid April because of digital eye strain problems. Like, the only streaming I was doing was tabletop games. That's pretty much it. Uh, 
and the digital eye strain was like a month and getting getting glasses it was just like oh yeah we can schedule in for a month from now it's like oh okay so got new glasses i had to take like a whole week to adjust just because i really needed new glasses yeah and then we got a cat almost immediately after and i was like well i can't stream and i need to go into the room every hour to check on the cat and spend time with her so she gets used to the place so it's just been like hey guys i'm a streamer now only i won't stream for two months taking breaks already this is one of those things so it's been a big month for just general health stuff though new glasses new bed all my money this year has gone to just being a responsible adult really sucks but here we are so hopefully this is the start of more streaming all i need is a haircut because my hair is yeah super long. you guys got me before uh, i get the mullet taken off next weekend just me two days ago i i the only way i can remember is it's like all right whenever finals start coming around i need to get a haircut because then that's when it starts getting bad I wish mine could be a mullet. Instead, it curls up into this fucking monster in the back of my head. Oh no, it does like the cowlick wave for that. Yeah. Like it just like hits your shirt and just starts. Yeah, it's not Devin's hair. That. It doesn't go down, it goes out. Mine goes down and then like curls around. So it's like I have this weird thing on the back of my neck that touches me all the time. I can't stand it. I, I'm, I'm fortunate to have straight hair, but the problem is, is that if I go for like the ponytail look, I just get strong comic book guy vibes from fan, uh, from The Simpsons. And I'm like, hmm, that's a that's not a good look, Jim. Oh no. But a more angular face, maybe. But twentieth, I get my my second shot, and then if I if I live a few more days, then I'll go get my hair cut. Yeah, luckily my mom's a stylist, so I just get her house. Lucky. Yeah. I have to go to people who I'm like, hey, leave the bangs that I love, and they're like, okay, they cut it. And they're like, alright, we're gonna touch your hair up now. And then they cut the bangs short, and I'm like, thank you. Now <laughs> when I feather my hair, it it's there's nothing there. I want it eye length so that when I feather it, it just it goes on the brow. It's not hard. But they're like, oh, but your hair was so long. It's like, no, I get free haircuts. I get haircuts when and where. Mom can do them. And uh, I get them done right because she's one of the best stylists in the area. Non biased. I wouldn't praise my mother if she didn't deserve it. In this house, we are uh, immediately aggroed towards all parental figures. That's fair. It's the gay lifestyle, you know? Yeah, I mean, my sister's the same way, so it checks out. Listen, when you have to threaten to take out people's parents' kneecaps and put them in backwards on such a regular basis, you just kind of auto-assume about people. Yeah. Devin would help. Yeah, I could do that. Fortunately, ours hasn't been too bad. But it hasn't been perfect. But that's because my dad's involved. Camilla's parents uh, seem pretty daddy good. Daddy issues. You love to see them, folks. Yeah. Just motivation to be a better dad. Anyway, this is totally not anime related, and I just I We're just commented up. earlier. It's been a while. It's been Isn't a while, it? and also this next part is going to be pretty intense. So, like, because we have a shorter session, I'm trying to debate on like where a good stopping point might be. Uh, the stopping point it point is fun. obviously. Uh, holding yet another one of Alex's characters' lives in your hands. 
<laughs> you can't kill this one, you promised. We speed run threatening to kill this one. <laughs> Listen, Arthur has a 50-50 chance of being alive or dead. I don't know. Whatever, whenever I decide it, it's going to be fucking random. But you promise not to kill Sebastian. I mean, if you die, it's your own damn fault. Because you got, you got two thick-ass meat walls and an unkillable vampire in front of you. You really shouldn't die. Yeah, honestly. Anywho... Uh, so where we last left off was the end of the Rosencrantz arc. You guys had managed to successfully help Anastasia with the varying problems with their hometown. And now City Rosencrantz is starting to become a hub for the supernatural, or at least the non-human uh, elements of society. In the world and it's it's very interesting if anything it's shown you guys that like with enough time and effort you know humans and non-humans can get along for now unless the church gets involved but you guys raffle stomp them so Oh no, Anastasia, we have to call in a few favors. Hey, Penwith, I need you to smash some people. Just a um, quick little note that I just realized you can do this while they uh, do other stuff. Um, I ain't Arthur. Hmm? My name is Arthur. I'm straight. Oh. Mm. Thanks for mentioning that. And also, Suzanne's on Ishtar. Uh, more specifically, I'm not Arthur. I'm not Finn with. Well, it's because Vale turned her camera off. Let's see, how would I do this voice? I think I misspelled that. Yes, you did. That's an A and not an O. Oh no, it's Sebastian's worst nightmare. He's body swapped into Fenwith. Oh no. Oh man. What are these emotions? Kill him. Kill him now. Why is there so much exposed skin? <laughs> And yeah, also uh, another important point of uh, mention, uh, Sebastian has broken down and asked his friends for help after well... getting a strange dream of a dark facility full of uh, monstrous beings. I would back it up just a tad on that friend's word, but you know did happen and also the hints at possibly a new power yeah beyond that if anyone is curious about uh, what had happened please check out the end of the epilogue video for uh, the Rosencrantz arc over on Bad Luck Gamer YouTube because a lot happens and there's a lot a lot of repercussions but the group has had some downtime to relax spend time throwing around on Sasuke's family I mean to be fair most of them are warriors Poor sis is going to be on bed rest for a while after fighting Finn with. And, 
yep. So, you guys have some downtime. If there's anything you want to do with it, while uh, Olin is returning with the uh, Temple of the Skyward Eye. Uh, Sebastian mainly experiments more with the, uh, the box. He knows he's not making much headway, obviously, at, like, developing his new ability, but it's the closest thing he has, and he's just gonna be kind of fiddling with it. Other than that, he doesn't really go interact with a lot of people, because he doesn't really want to see a lot of them. Biggest thing is he doesn't show back up at the uh, Amaro's house. <laughs> the biggest, like, the most important thing is He's he great. doesn't go and talk to Lily. <laughs> no. He said goodbye, and now if he came back, it'd be kind of awkward. It's like when you say bye to someone, you walk in the same direction. Like it's the kind of the same thing. It's a lot of, like, there's a lot of social stuff there that you don't want to get into. Well, I'm not surprised that he, or I'm surprised that he, uh, notices that there is anything awkward about that. She tries to, like, they're walking the same way. So, I've already said goodbye to you. Keep floating. Extend this conversation or we get weird. Keep the social going. anxiety has just been racked up to the highest levels. As it's just like, it's like when you say goodbye and then you stay in the same city with someone. <laughs> Like, I need to fucking leave this city, man. It's just too uncomfortable. Too claustrophobic for me. Well, if there's any, nothing else you guys decide to do, then... After not too long, Olin comes back, and... Uh, Sebastian, you get this this voice in your head. <clears throat> Has everything been settled? Just so you know, your voice didn't make it through, so it sounded like you just went. S oh, sorry. Then, no, no. yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh no, he's gone feral. <laughs> Launches the nuke wants... from the floating castle. <laughs> <laughs> Scared the whole city. It's gone. Very well. Then. I'll be waiting on the outskirts of the city for you all. Understood. It's funny, compared to the uh, blood fight in the middle of the uh, noble quarter... I don't think anybody would be too uh, fussed to see a cloud. Then, uh, Sebastian just goes around telling everyone that Olin's back. Alright, let me go inform my family I'm leaving. Oh, before you go, tell them I said bye. Nah, it's fine. You go say goodbye to your family. Okay. I think it's important that you have some alone time with them, you know? So, Anastasia goes and says bye to their family. Unless there's anything particular you want to say. They're willing to let you go at this point in, in Juncture. Um, Lauren is busy setting up the new city police force. And uh, ever since word that the city will be growing vastly in, in the coming months has come by, uh, the uh, 
Serban House has been all uh, a, a tizzy. They, they're just busy going around looking at things. Uh, this city has grown and, and slowly over time and the walls, you know, have been established. But now that there's more people coming, the city has to expand and there's just areas of the forest that need to be leveled out and, and properly secured, so. I'm sure there's no repercussions for that whatsoever. <laughs> Thing of note Anastasia would do is if one of brother goes what he's going to be dealing with the divorce. Yeah. You got quieter and quieter as that went on. I really think that you have some ox cord issue or something. Yeah, I'm starting to think it's just your like the actual plug in itself. Yeah. Cause you use a laptop, yeah. No, depending on how much you use it, it can... It might just be going. <laughs> yeah. Probably. That sounded better. Sure. I just think your aux ports are terrible for some reason. But hey, we need to get you that microphone that we mentioned. <laughs> Sorry, cat comes first. Uh, well, I mean, I just looked it up. You can get... Uh, this might work, a USB to aux adapter. Oh, I'd have to work deeper into it to see, but if you have an open USB slot, it might work. Oh, thankfully, I do. Yeah, if you, use an, if you use an aux cable, like, or an audio jack enough, it just wears and tears until it just can't stay in. It well, the problem, this is a new laptop, like, well, this th That's winter. weirder. To be fair, I'm just happy this laptop functions better than my other one. Yeah, but... <laughs> I can't have everything perfect. Listen, if it increases my ability to hear you, my offer still stands. Y'all take it too long on it. I'm just gonna buy it. I have your address. I can just make the decision for you if you don't. Suzanne's just like that though. Whenever it comes to buying anything for herself, she just she's like, it can wait. We got we got other things to I buy. Bet. Let me check real quick. You guys continue. <laughs> See, this is what your stubbornness does, Suzanne. People have to have to spite buy you things. I mean, yeah. Suzanne probably have... makes the best money of anyone here, honestly. So it's if not I wasn't... an issue like that. Yeah, but if I wasn't wasting it in gas all the time. <laughs> Uh, that's that's why we're taking the ferry. Yeah. All right. Does, is it okay being just a, a desk sitting one, or do you need one that like it fits on arms and bullshit like Cameron's? You got enough room for a sitting one, or is a one that like attaches to something better? Uh, something that attaches is probably what I'd be looking at. Just because I'm sitting on this couch more often than not for now. Congrats. Val, you'll be receiving dice in the near future. <laughs> anyway, that nonsense aside. Uh, what were you saying about your brother? I was just going to let him know what we're dealing with on the north. So just on the very rare chance I don't come back, he knows what to expect. Well, Lawrence, he looks over you, and it's a, it's a somewhat somber expression, or at least in comparison to his more jovial nature. And he just nods, and he puts a hand on your shoulder. And us... I'm not lucky enough for you to die so quickly. I expect you to be a pain in my ass for centuries to come. True, but it doesn't hurt to have some mourning. That's fair. Well, remember, your family is always here for you. 
and grabs you by both your shoulders. Remember, your family is always here for you. I got it the first time. Unfortunately, where I'm going, I can't ask for your help. And besides, you've got enough to worry about. I think someone's being arrested down the street right from her house. I, I actually think I hear someone, like, uh, 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 a policeman speaking through, like, a... Uh, through a megaphone. I think I, they are. I think I just heard you're under arrest. Oh, Hold no. One second. Oh, gosh. Someone's being arrested for domestic violence. So yeah, uh, they're just like, hey, we have you surrounded. Uh, you're, you, we have multiple warrants for domestic violence. Don't try to escape. This is happening. I can see it. Jesus. <laughs> is it on the corner? Do you want to go look? Feel free. The curiosity, I know. Is it more to guys? He finally going away? No. no. Damn it. I think he's gone already, though. I haven't heard the motorcycle in forever. Maybe. If you're free to go look as well, Devin, because uh, as people, we're just prone to go and be like, oh, drama? Something's happening that doesn't involve me? Delicious. Nah, I'm fine. But now I have to close the fucking sliding glass door. Otherwise, our audio is just going to be ruined by your under arrest. We have multiple warrants for domestic violence. It's just, you just see some of uh, Anastasia's, like, uh, members just, like, busting a house just randomly next door. It's fine. Man, when the vampire police come for you, you know you fucked up. All right. After his brother, he just says his goodbyes and rejoins the group. Also, bye to rat of him, since they don't talk much. And he is also busy getting around, getting the city all prepped up. And everything, and when you stop by, he's already in a whirlwind of action, and he just turns, and he's just like, Oh, I'm sorry. I wish you would stay, but I know you have to go. I'll be back. I just gotta take care of something first. Yes, I did hear about the many uh, things your group is doing, which... To be fair, my own group is doing something similar, so I suppose uh, we are just bound to fight that which is undying. It's a strange coincidence, in all honesty. You know, many of the mortals believe that we're undead. I don't know where they got that idea. I ran across one that also seems to think we don't like garlic. Well, we don't, do we? We, oh, don't we don't eat, eat their food. They seem to think it's a repellent of some sort. Same as holy water. I don't know what to say, other than... Holy water, I guess, must mean the church is nearby, so I guess it works. Somebody actually just ran into a Vitello one day who just, like, really just hates the smell of garlic. Absolutely can't say. I was like, you know, ugh, leaves. It's like, huh. They must not like that. I 
there's one where they like run across like a small creek and they had really nice shoes on. They're like, ah, I'm not going through the running water. That'd be gross. Come across the one Vitella that has an extreme case of water fear. <laughs> no, they just don't want to get their shoes wet. They're like, ah, oh, damn it, they got away. Oh well. That'd be an awful. <laughs> it's actually just a Vitella who is cursed to basically experience all of the slander that their people have gone through over the years. So they literally uh, flinch at crosses. They can't cross running water. They have to ask to be brought inside. I was like the idea that like they fear the cross is just someone just waving a cross in someone's face. I'm like anyone would flinch. Someone's just throwing this wooden cross and just like ah! He's just like oh cop stop. Stop I'll proselytizing, please. It's really awkward. Read the room. <laughs> anyway. And yeah, with that, you finish your business. And you all head out to the outskirts of the city. And Olin kind of walks out of the, the forest nearby. He looks you all over. He nods in approval. You all look vastly stronger. It was a very good journey. I'm glad to see you are well as well, Olin. I mean, there's a couple things we didn't get the fight that we had to kind of like go around, which sucked, but had a good time. Maybe next time. I see. Well. Would have been cool if we could kill two demon lords. He stops for a moment <laughs> at that at that comment. And shakes his head. Come on. You should be strong enough to handle what lies before you then. So along he uh, just barely raises a hand and with a <laughs> you all are teleported onto the deck of the uh, temple I got to admit I'm not quite used to that still and he kind of like shakes an arm Well, you should. That will be happening much more frequently from now on. You eventually just get used to, like, weird stuff happening to your body via magic. Just roll with it. Smash kind of nuts. Maybe not to the same, like, extent. Uh, <laughs> as he can, like, clicks his claws together. So, I guess now we'll be making for the peak of the world. Oh. About that. I was wondering if we could stop in Gabriel. Who looks the other? We are not one to take personal time. I have business, business I need to take care of. There is a laboratory that needs to be destroyed. And there may be things in there that we can use for our mission. Well, I do recommend you do... Anything you feel like you've left undone. Because facing off against the Undying King, you will not have much more 
opportunities even if you survive exactly why I wish you do this now alright then show me on the map where you wish to go mm, he heads into the temple he follows he, he also uh, Sebastian's been learning at least how the the pilot like piloting this temple works so so me knows well how to guide him to it because also i sebastian knows where it is let's say uh operating this requires very specific knowledge and true knowledge of the deva language uh but it also does produce a large like 3d-ish map that you can interact with and panning out a bit to the maximum range of the uh, of the temple you know that your destination lies somewhere on the northern side of Gabriel he will do his best to give the closest like point to it he will do his best to find like near the exact spot on the map as much as he can okay and with that you guys begin making a southwesternly uh, trip towards a small forest near the Mirenheim mountain range. At the speed that you guys are going, you guys will be there in a day. Because man, flying as the crow flies 30 miles an hour without stopping, you can get really far. Oh yeah. It's about, actually it'll probably be two days. Let's see, 750 miles. It'll take you a day and one hour, 25 hours. As I love the temple, jet. Yeah. As the temple begins to slowly shift and begin moving and picking up speed any of you who are on the deck can feel the the wind beginning to blow past you and the fin with kind of like fingers around uh inside for a little bit but he does ask like about how long until they hit uh moth's border and when told, Hilla got to one of the decks. He doesn't know if he's looking through the eye, but if he is, he wants him to see outside of Moth. So, whenever they're traveling, Finwith is going to be looking for uh, cool views. Nice. Okay. So he goes and perches on one of the railings. The town's kind of hooked around the edges. Uh -huh. during the flight Sebastian kind of immediately goes back to his business of what he was doing last time he was on the temple uh, with basically little to no inter almost as if there's no interruption he goes back to that library and he begins trying to find resources to learn the Deva language he wants to learn how to pilot this thing okay not too much to do in a day unfortunately it basically it's just something for him to do and instead of just sitting there but he anytime he's here he wants to go back to work on that fortunately the the archive here has a very sophisticated system and the the helper ai as it were 
is competent enough to provide for you images and uh, enunciations of simple items. Like an advanced Rosetta Stone. Granted, not designed for language learning purposes, yeah. so... He's finding it out. So, with that, uh, the temple flies and, well, you guys have a day before you get to where you're going. Oh, if we're passing by the salt mines, Anastasia would point it out to Fenwith for him to see. But keep an eye out for the salt sea. Yep. Just point it out to him so he knows what it looks like. Uh, it is relatively close enough, and when you guys start hitting the border of Moth, you guys see the Sea of Salt, which is a large, <clears throat> dusty white uh, valley that kind of hits almost the tri-border of Gabriel, Goldar, and Smoth. It's a real fucking shame it's in the mountains. You can just pick it up out of the valley, just put it everywhere in Moth. He just shakes his head. Sighs. But if you ever need salt... I'm pretty sure it'd be easier to just, like, buy some. Fair enough. That is a lot of salt, though. Why is there so much salt. salt there? I don't know, do I know any reason why, lore-wise, that there would be There's a sea of salt? Fucking the desert mountain? of salt. Uh, roll your history, I suppose. It's actually a waiter just uh, cranking a salt thing, and the guy still hasn't said he's, he's done yet. Admittedly, he got killed by a demon, but they take their service very seriously. <laughs> Best for service. I know no history. I have a minus 30. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, unfortunately, outside your, your realm of knowledge. I'm not using the stick to ask why there's salt there. <laughs> why is there salt there? You just get this, like, profile of, like, some grungy miner. Back in my day. It was a history check, you say? It's a history roll, yes. For Hoffman boy? I have something like that. Ah, low roll, though. Uh, that's still a 133, though. Well, you said you had something like textbook. that. Do you have history, history or, or do you not? Yeah, I do have history. Okay. Oh. Then you have that, not something like that. <laughs> it's very important. That's right. In this game, you don't get a roll if you don't got the knowledge. Uh, let's see. See us all. Here we go. Oh, interesting. Uh, you know a fun tidbit of information. Uh, <clears throat> the area is one of the largest uh, salt veins in all of Gaia. And due to the uh, native moth... Uh, what is their... What are they called? I'm actually curious about that now. It gives the... Oh, Moser is what they're called. <laughs> the Mosers believe that they fear... Uh, that spirits fear... 
salt as it has a you know like a cleansing property to it and it's actually due to this fact that uh the widespread idea that salt is for uh repelling spirits actually comes from is this innately large salt area that the Mosers like notice hey there's no spooky shit here they must hate this they did the vampire thing, but then they threw salt on something, and it was like, ugh. They're like, oh, we were right. Fortunately, it was a slug demon. The fools. Those do exist. They are a thing. I know. One was inside one of my characters. I know. Just oh, you had I a yerk? Specify. Yeah. It tried to take over me, and then I reverse unoed it. Yeah, that's what the yerks do. <laughs> Nice little banana slugs. It gave me regeneration for a while. Nice. Not worth having your body taken over. It didn't take my body. <laughs> he he possessed it in some roundabout way. Anima. Anima. Anyway, uh, you guys are heading to this unmarked forest. Yep, just cross right on by. Yep, I'm looking at the wrong map. There we go. I may have had the other map pulled up in a different window, and I was like, there is no pig. All right. Right next to the Breto Dene River. I don't remember what D E A U or what E A U is. It's probably. Oh. Probably Breto Dieu, right? May have to it's see. French, okay. <laughs> good thing Doc isn't here. I'm pretty good with some most like French enunciations. That one is just too many vowels in a row for me. Anyway. Uh and so you guys rest that evening i'm assuming no freak arthur here to just be like what's sleep uh sebastian stays as much as he can inside the archive but he, eventually he starts fucking fading <laughs> just like i need to sleep and goes back to his chambers and as you guys kind of coast over at about some time uh, late afternoon, you guys kind of arrive over the forest. Unfortunately, there's too many trees to really see where the facility might be. So you guys will have to go and find it on foot. So, once you're all ready, Olin will uh, bamf y'all down to the ground. As you guys arrive, you know, lightning crash. Kind of rubs his arms to the, the natural just hair rays of being near a lightning bolt. You know, one of these days he's going to throw us down somewhere and there's going to be somebody, like, sitting there. I'm going to give him a heart attack. It's Thor, God of Thunder. <laughs> the strong smell of uh, ionized air fills the immediate area from the lightning strike. And you guys look on to what appears to be a generally normal forest it's got a very strong pine or uh, deciduous tree oh and the uh night before or uh finn would switches from uh, the owl to bear since he's under the impression they're gonna have to uh, beat up some ghosts from uh sebastian's past he also has the magic devourer too 
I do need to add that. We're just going to walk in and it's going to be a nice home. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> the horror. It's like just a regular fucking house. Like, pretty nice. It's got the little white picket fence. There's a dog. It's well behaved, tail wagging. Peonies called everywhere. A, called it a uh, nuclear family. Horrifying. Doesn't it just sound volatile? <laughs> Nuclear. Anyway, uh, and I was incorrect. Mostly non-deciduous trees, though there are some deciduous trees mixed in. Uh, not a very odd-looking forest, or at least compared to what half of y'all did in uh, Moth, this just looks like a cakewalk. Hey, there's no big vein trees this time. Oh, thank God. All of those weird, like, uh, dried out husk things. I must admit that, uh. I'm kind of used to the other ones now. They seem rather. not red. Oh, Cameron, did I ever get the information on the blood vine? And the Ishtar totems? Uh. The bloodvine, I don't think we got to. No, I don't, because we we went and did the Rosencrat stuff after that. I don't think you gave it to me in between. Hmm. Yeah. So I'll need bloodvine and Ishtar. Uh, Ishtar, surprisingly enough, can tell you, because it's all their greater beast blood abilities. Fancy. <laughs> so, there you go. Uh, Ishtar can drop that for you, I suppose. Unfortunately, it's not stuff Fenwith already doesn't have, which is pretty much the wings and the claws and the it's additional scale. It's not about scale. the new stuff, okay? It's It was a gift from a friend. And my notes. I need it for me notes. So All you can right. just DM it to me whenever. Yeah, let me go through her sheet. Let's see here. Not that one. Bum, 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 bum. Cause the bloodvine actually only really does one thing. Yeah, I'd like to attract spirits or whatever. Yes. But he wasn't well, sure if that it does two things, I guess. All he was told was that it uh, draws spirits, so he wasn't sure if that uh, interacted weird with how he does his magic, because he doesn't know how it actually works, uh, or just other fun stuff. Half these things he doesn't need to use, but he likes collecting them. What was Sebastian's thoughts on the blood vein trees? He didn't see them. Oh, I know. Uh, I assume we described described them while telling the story. Strange. He, it looks at it like that's a strange material for trees to be built out of. Hmm. But it's primarily that thing of like you're explaining something spooky to someone, and they're just like, "I am. I, I have to see it." Except he just doesn't pretend that it, he just pretend doesn't do that. Like, oh yeah, it sounds scary. He just doesn't do that. He's just like, I don't, I can't picture this. I'd have to see it. Uh, so it does two things. Uh, both are Genos zero cost ten. It has undead hatred. Hold on. Okay. So it has Undead Hatred, uh, which is kind of like the opposite of Animal Friendship, where in the situation where there are undead spirits or otherwise, uh, they attack you first because they sense a strong uh, source of vitality coming from you.
the other property is uh, you gain I guess yeah you gain uh, or it's uh, what's it called Uh, sure there's a word for it Uh, you also gain hematophagy, which just means you can sustain yourself on blood. <laughs> nice. When invoking the uh the blood vine your body gains large thick uh red tubular growths that cover your body <laughs> stab somebody with a pool noodle <laughs> drain them <laughs> unfortunately it can't be used for attack you just, you just attract undead and also can drink blood. That's that's what. It does. And get really veiny. Get really veiny. Excellent. That's You're horrible. You're so lucky we're not popular because that that would be used for evil. <laughs> so much evil. But yeah, that's all it does. And because they're both G genus is zero. Uh, you can use it with your acquire capacities rather than acquire powers. Yep. Which means you can just be like that as much as you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, the cost of that is stupid cheap. <laughs> it's really low. So, if he's uh, ever trapped somewhere where there's no uh, food and water, but there's people to murder, yeah, you know. It's less cannibalism, right? They'll just make more blood. You don't have to actually kill them. Oh, I guess as an additional feature of the hematophagy, uh, it gives you essentially, you only need to drink as, or you only need to consume as much as if you had, uh, uh, what's it called? Is it eliminate necessities? Oh, limited needs. Limited needs. I think it. I think it was changed though to elimination of necessities. I don't know. It's on Alex's character sheet. The elimination thing. Yeah, the original one. The elimination of necessities instead of the uh, use of no needs. Energy? Are you talking about the nemesis one? Oh my! It's yeah. elimination of necessities. Uh, Use of necessary energy is the march one. Yeah. Where you just force march and lose uh, fatigue less often. Yep. Yeah. Which just means that you would need to can only consume about a tenth of what you would need to uh, survive, calorically speaking. Oh no, that's okay. Well, let him. I never thought I would have to look up the caloric value of blood. But here we are. Huh.
It's still a lot of blood, actually. You still need to consume about 500 milliliters. Just under... Just about a pound of blood. That'll get you the roughly 300 calories you would need to survive. At one-tenth the value. Aaron was fucking monstrous. To be fair, I just made this up, so it's mostly on me. <laughs> well, still, they but, gave you the stuff to, to do this. Uh, I mean, it's easy enough to figure out. But uh, <laughs> Alright, well, now you know. Essentially, you can take a donation's worth of blood. Thus, you guys begin walking through the forest, and it's a rather serene endeavor. I mean, it's not trying to kill you. You don't necessarily sense any uh, threats around every corner. I don't slowly have shadow vultures perching on my shoulder. That is yeah. true. Uh, Sebastian does his best to remember where... He knows where it is. It's just, last time he was here, he was running in the opposite direction. So, he's trying to retrace the steps. Kind of. Unfortunately, you went... You can't. You went towards Goldar. But you guys are coming from Moth, so you're getting, coming in from the mirrored path. It's not an overly big forest, but you still have a sense you know where you're going. Yeah. And you guys can chat for like a minute. All right, I gotta use the restroom real quick. So, Sebastian, tell us uh, more about uh, what we're dealing with here. Yeah, what should we expect? It's the plan. He pauses, takes a little bit to respond, but um, I am not sure. Has it been a long time since you were last here? Let's see. It has been around six years, I think. The rate of the experiment and the amount of people left by the time I left means that it is most likely concluded. So most of the people I know are dead. As well. That's a long time for things to change. Certain elements might be broken. Hopefully some security measures are damaged, but Primarily, what I'm hoping to get out of this is that the director, for some reason, is still there. Or, at least, a way to find them. Is there anything we should worry about security, Wes? Like, do they have armed guards, or...? Some of that. Automated defenses. He looks blankly at you. Some of the things that um, Claude talked about. He continues to look blankly. He looks over to the other. Uh, the machine things. Oh. They're uh, like big metal stuff that moves on its own. As he's oh. like uh, moving to, he uh, pulls out the box and like makes it look like uh, a. What's one of the things that he's had to deal with a lot? These kind of um, target gun drone things. Oh, was it like a flying turret or something like that? Like, yeah, the thing described that uh, camera described, like with it's a, it's a standing. Uh, it looks like a mannequin that has two guns for arms. Is essentially what most of them wear. 
he, he just like makes it appear as like he keeps just kind of moving and it's there for uh about seven seconds and it just disappears It doesn't look very formidable, but I will. We will have this. They are dangerous. No, no. Didn't you have someone in your party that shot one of those things when you were in the forest? Shot one of what? Sorry, someone was thumping around. He shot the um, uh, the gun turret, like the mannequin two guns, uh. Oh, yeah, but the one that went after Claude, like, shot a bunch of them. Oh, no, I meant when you were in the forest. The kind of forest. Didn't you have someone that did some shot one of these? Uh, I mean, I guess kind of smaller, though. I thought you meant shooting the robot, not shooting guns. <laughs> so I was, no, like, no, no. I was like, no, there's no robots in the Gehenna forest. That's definitely not its aesthetic. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, but... I realized my mistake. <laughs> it's, if it is in any way similar, then you would know how dangerous these are. Oh, yeah. No, he kept killing things before I could get to them, which was really rude of him. That's Sorry, we worked rude. it out eventually. <laughs> it did appear that whenever he would shoot that stuff and it survived, uh, it would immediately try to kill him. Oh, yeah. No, it hurts. He shot me in the thigh. Clavier page, then. But I don't have a plan. Looks legitimately surprised. Sebastian always has a plan. It's hard to plan for something you have no knowledge of. That's fine. I have a great plan. So we go in there. We don't die getting in there. We beat the shit out of anything that's alive. And then you decide if you want to talk to it and get information or if you want us to just kill it and then we kill it I see a lot of holes in this plan but is the best we have i will fill all of the holes i will just uh beat them close it will be fine <laughs> it looks like he's genuinely considering that yeah if you don't got an answer to a problem i got two see ya i <laughs> just like lifts his fists jokingly <laughs> with a grin he nods, just kind of. To be fair, the big old bo uh, bear paws have solved most problems Finwith has come across. <laughs> he's seen it and solved a lot of problems, so he's that's why he's actually considering this. I, I, I can only imagine now some bruiser-looking guy who's just this big math nerd, and he's just like, here's my two answers. Variable and values. Anyway, so as you guys are going through the forest, uh, it's becoming about sunset. And the forest kind of takes on this lightish orange hue as light streams through. And you see a quaint little cottage out in the middle of nowhere. There are uh, large stacks of wood next to it. It looks like a logger's cabin. And this is the facility. We're here. This is what we're taking care of. Uh, as you guys approach, you see it's starting to get moss on the roof. A good amount, but I mean, which buildings don't really. Uh, it's quiet. A lot of the wood that's here is now thoroughly soaked through from many seasons in the rain just being, you know, laid to the elements, but... Not needed because you have an electrical facility. Yeah, it was mostly just, uh, it's a yeah. logger's cabin, you know. Though no. Sebastian knows, at least, or at least when Sebastian left all those years ago, that they had someone at at the top who was the the logger who kind of just sat around just kind of to give the feeling that it was lived in that no one would bother it you know 
big burly dude. Someone that you wouldn't want to mess with if you were some randing roving bandit or whatever. What a shitty job. Your job is literally sit around and wait. Yeah. At least give the guy a switch or something. But the uh, Alexi will like the the uh, cottage and kind of look at Sebastian. He's like, I must admit, by your stories, it looked it seems like it would be a lot uh, bigger. They're not to build a secret laboratory in just the middle of the woods. It is disguised. He does turn, uh, goes, just, uh, are there any signs of life? You guys you don't guys see are... anything. <laughs> you guys are the ones that can sense it, too. So. Oh, yeah, oh, what's, yeah. Your That's range? Your... what's your range, right. Alexi? <laughs> I'm close enough. Uh, I have an 800 foot range. Oh, uh, yeah. That's 800. You can feel below, too. I didn't Unless take Mark. Get the metal. What do you want from me? He can't feel below. Can't get the metal? Uh, okay, not special herbs. kinds of, of metal. I figured. Typically, if, uh, if anything has energy running through it, like anything that's like electrical by nature, most senses and abilities can't get through it. Also stops things like magical, uh, like if you have the ability to move through objects with magic, it also stops that. So, but no, you don't detect any any signs of life within a hundred feet beyond your group, and I guess a wide variety of like local fauna. There is a little bit of energy, but nothing coming from the hut that I can sense. And this is most likely abandoned. There is usually someone here to keep watch. And he approaches, like, the front door. It's just like, shucks, well, we tried. Please. As you guys approach, you see the windows are caked in dust. And the interior seems relatively untouched. opens the door psychically you do so and uh the doorknob turns door opens you go inside as you do so a, a a sweeping of dust kicks up into the air and you can see that there's a wide variety or not wide variety you can see that there's a lot of dust over everything and a foul smell oh yeah Somebody dead. Mm, doesn't smell like that. It smells like mm -hmm. rotting food. Oh. Ugh. Yeah. Ditch the stores, I guess. But as you um, guys enter in, it's quaint. It's a, you know, it's about like a, a twenty-five by twenty foot building. Pretty much everything is there. There's now a house out back, um, the kitchen and everything. And beyond the strong smell of dust, you can also smell faintly uh, the smell of rotting, rotting foods. Well, it, if it is abandoned, I guess they didn't want to uh, take the provisions with them. So do we have to worry about any traps like up here? No, there's no traps on this upper part. And the house, the cottage just looks normal. Nothing's disturbed or anything like that. Yeah, nothing's disturbed. There is a, a standing stove in the corner. And uh, a variety of wooden furniture. And a good number of badly carved, like, uh, wooden animals. Those suck. I do. I could do way better. Fashion I could be looking the for the entrance. Okay. Editors now. You can. So, the entrance is underneath the stove, and it can only be opened from the inside. Oh, 
influenced by force somehow. Lux at Fenwin. <laughs> Do I think I could rip up a stove? I'll try. Uh, what's your strength? Uh, with the bear currently in 11. And what's your feats of strength? Uh, 40. You feel like you could probably do some damage to it, but it'd be a bit of a strain. What if I assisted them? I have a 60 in feats of strength, and currently, since it's still daylight, a 10 in strength. You guys can work together. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. You can give either one of you a plus 20. Someone forgot their dice. I didn't ask. It's been too long. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You get a pass today. Today has just been... It's a startup day, you know. <laughs> nice. Let me know if you want me to actually roll my strength. No, no, no. That's to be okay. a piece of strength check. Okay. Yeah. And that's with the plus 20? Oh, sorry. No, I didn't know that. Well, 129. Uh, you begin to, like, shift slightly the stove, and you see that actually towards the top where the stove kind of connects to the pipe that, you know, leads out, uh, there's actually a point where it separates seamlessly. Um, but even with that, as you're moving it, you can definitely tell that more is keeping this attached to the ground than meets the eye. And uh, you're only able to slightly, like, tilt it and kind of bend it before you, your strength gives out. Too heavy. Do I think ground control could work here? Uh, no, because it doesn't work on metal. It only works okay. on the ground. What about shatter? You could attempt to shatter it if you get a high enough roll. I'm gonna try. And then with what kind of point where he feels most of the resistance, if it helps at all. How long does it take for those psychic points to come back? I haven't read up those rules in a while. I believe you get one back an hour, but I could double check for you. Over right here? Yeah, one per hour. That reminds me. I have to look up some special rules myself. Oh, no. I'm going to use a, a uh, psychic point on this. Okay. To increase my potential. Just one. Okay. Don't well, forget your psychic inclination. The shit was that too? Oh yeah, the bump up. Well, I don't know if that's going to matter too much because I just open the <laughs> help god my dice are very excited to be back that is a max i can get of 280 uh 160 physical resistance <laughs> okay Soon I'll learn how to get in humanity. I don't know what key is. So. Six 
Sebastian does, because you were thinking about investing in it earlier. At some point, but I need uh, to learn like how to use it. So, <laughs> unfortunately, the one person that does have inhumanity in the party, we have no idea how it works. Yeah, they push the body further than normal. Always for it. So eventually, when that happens. Yeah, I can get inhumanity. I had the points for it. I just, you know, need to actually learn it. Alright, so, uh, Arthur actually showed me how to teach people key stuff. So you just decide that you can do it, and then you can do it. Um, that's very similar to my abilities already. Yeah, just a force of uh, will. I have a lot of willpower. My willpower is a very high number. I'm sure you're, like, if you had to put it on a scale of, like, 1 to 10... I would actually say it's more of a 13. Yeah, Alexi, that sounds about right. Alexia raises an eyebrow at that explanation of how key works. Wait, your willpower is a 13? That's the max I can get without getting in humanity. I, I had to reduce it because I put it 14, but it's, it's 13. But you can go higher once you get in humanity, and I think even higher once you get zoned. Because there's, there's a thing on that in the front of the book. Well, let's see. Yes and no. Uh, 13 is the good. highest with the add one point to a characteristic advantage. To get past that, uh, you need a like, GM intervention, pretty much. You need a additional methods to get beyond 13, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're fine with 13. Because, like, players yeah. and then, like, creatures and other entities, yeah, those rules work differently for them. Yeah, of course. For us, we get capped at 13 because we can't become gods. Yeah. Unless the DM says so. DM, can I become god? Come on, DM, please. Just let me achieve godhood. Please? Can I have mean, little A on ending it's power? It's not a choice of mine. Your character is... As we saw in the last chapter here, uh, we're already pretty godlike. Can I have just a just a crumb of divinity, please? Come on, DM. I don't know if we want Sebastian with divinity. I want divinity. Can have 20 more gnosis? I want Sebastian to be a god. Like Have strength like, enough to push the earth? Alex is fiending for her after getting destroyed in actual divinity. <laughs> <laughs> Guys didn't want my skeleton that I've forgotten the name of already to be the most evil god <laughs> the world's ever seen. Terrible. What was my character's name again? I've forgotten it purposefully because it was a fucking meme. Yeah, that was a joke. Yeah, of course it was. I'm not going to name a character something serious. It was like Bofus or something like that. I don't remember. Big Bofus, that was it. No, Big Bofus. Big Bofus. Big Bofus. Coincidentally, there's a character in Arcadum's games who's nicknamed Boofer. <laughs> so it is a real name. That's what I'm hearing. I wouldn't say so. I'd say so. Okay, my god. Finding the rule I needed took forever. All right. Oh, yeah. So, uh, oh, there's that rule too. God damn it. Oh, God. <laughs> well, no, it's your your damage against the object. It's a check of 160 or what? That was the physical uh, resistance needed for um, uh, shatter. I got up to that range. It needs to pass a physical resistance check wherever the object is. Let's see. If the target is an object with structural resistance or a creature with damage resistance, damage equals five times the check's failure level. Okay. And it rolls only its base presence. I mean, I don't even have it roll. It's just gonna use its base presence, um, which is surprisingly low. Okay. Uh, what was the check? One one sixty, right? One sixty. One sixty. Okay. Uh, it fails by one hundred and twenty. So it does 
six hundred damage. Pieces. God. To be fair, for some objects, that's not even enough to destroy them. Uh, yeah, fair. Uh, for I, that... something of this size, though, it's more than adequate. So, stove. as you you focus at the base of the uh, of the stove, suddenly uh, your your psychic power focuses, and the, you all just watch as like a part of the ground just like collapses in on itself slightly and like even the the stove just kind of like crunches down and then uh breaks to pieces as all it falls down an incredibly long shaft straight down straight down oh we didn't call the elevator first Oh, man, I'm sick. As you see, there is a, a rung of ladder that or rungs for a ladder that goes down this side oh, of the uh that's way good equipment for climbing. Sebastian already uh <laughs> Sebastian already has his float just permanently on again. So uh, but also I, I forgot to mention I have another innate slot that I got. Ooh. Because I need it for a long uh electromagnetism combo in the future. Uh uh, but, um, he just floats over and floats down. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> and, uh, heads over the ladder, like, awkwardly clambers over a bit. Alexi waits a moment and then follows. Does your rear form increase your size? Uh, yes. You can't fit. Oh, it's too narrow. It's 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 the size of a normal human. They thought of everything. Or they just didn't account for a bear man. <laughs> yeah, I'm I count as size big, so. Yeah, you're too big to fit through this unfortunately. The second you get on the ladder your back starts like painfully scraping against the back side of the tunnel. Oh, come on, I'm only like two feet there. He just paws back up. Hulls himself back over. Looks down. Piteous whine. Oh. Uh, looking down, can I see the bottom? Or is it just complete darkness after a certain point? Um, you can, because you have night vision. I wasn't sure if there was a range to it or not. Nope. It's as far as the eye can see. Uh, you can see... It goes a ways down to the point where all the debris at the bottom is uh, really small, prospectively. As it really has no barons, it's a 200 foot shaft. Well, we wanted to see if we I could take you through the shadows. Maybe? I can give it a shot. If you're up for it, Finn was. Well, even if you could, you'll just be at the bottom of the shaft, which is still too small for Finn's body. <laughs> He'll just be there, just be like... And then there will be both of you down there. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna have to use it again later. Okay. Go ahead and go first. Take my money. Alexi nods and uh, he begins making his way down the ladder. And even for Alexi, it's kind of a tight fit. Yeah, Finn was not looking forward to even the regular squeeze down it. It's that 10 con. It's really going against him now. I don't think they've ever worked with mountain men from the north. On the south, I would use the ring and just shadow step down. Upset grumbles. Well, then you're the first one down, Anastasia. And as you kind of uh, step to the bottom, you see the 
shattered remains of the the stove and the the metal portcullis that uh that made up the majority of the 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 latch you see that there is it's kind of like it's a smooth round uh chamber and there is a door or at least something vaguely door shaped in front of you but there is also no handle on it looking around you see what appears to be like a box on the side and it has like glass on it and aside from my companions climbing down I can't hear anything can I? no it's safe at the bottom Z calls up through the shaft it's safe <laughs> they can't hear you they <sighs> You're 200 yeah. feet away from them at the moment. <laughs> he waits for everyone. It's any consolation. I know you're there. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel you. Sebastian is the first to arrive uh, as he just flies. While everyone else has to climb. Just yeah. perches on Anastasia. That'd be funny. He just gets there again, floating like a few inches above the ground and just floats over to the door. No the He's like a. There's not enough room for you both to be at the bottom. This is a one man shaft. So. Mm -hmm. oh, he'll get out of the way. How? Is there, like, Unfortunately, it's getting to Sebastian's personal space. Mm -hmm. Sebastian could just float above you. you well, that's the like problem. He can't get past you. Alternatively, you could uh, shadow step to the ladder, I suppose. Can you teleport behind me and turn into mist real quick? He'll teleport behind you. It's not right. effort on the people. He, uh, he's going to start looking over everything to see if he knows a way to open you it. You can't see shit. It is pitch black down here. Fuck. Uh, Give him descriptions of what I can see, since I know he can't see in the dark. Sure. No, to your left. No, your other left. You mean my right. Can I create a uh, a little level one construct creature with the command box that's just a little flashlight? Sure. Uh, you do so. It spawns into life, and for all of seven seconds, you can see the door. In the box, the glass box. Yes, it is a uh, fingerprint reader. Uh, that would be nice if they left you the key. That would be. One of those you horror know, movies. on the other side of the door, there is a handle. There is a, a, a switch that you can pull down to force the door to open. That's how you escaped before. Could can you shadow through things? Uh, I have the passage of the wake thing, so I can teleport myself sixty feet, up to sixty feet. You also can turn intangible. Yeah. So I have multiple ways. I can it's just super key expensive. Yeah, it is, unfortunately. Uh, then in that case, is there a way for me to psychically pull that switch? Or do I need to see it? Uh, you need line of sight, unfortunately. Okay. Then... If only you had a machine that could create, like, x-ray goggles. For seven <laughs> seconds. <laughs> That's enough time. Uh, then he'll basically put his hand up to the door and try to shatter it again. Does okay. that work? Go ahead. The alarms are another, uh, It's going to be another psychic point. Okay. I'm locked. Alright. That's not an open roll, but it's pretty good. Like I said, my dice are very excited to be playing anime again. They're behaving today. Uh, that's gonna be 228 bumped up to 240. That's 140 physical resistance. Okay, one moment. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> Faint snake eater, like playing through the ladder. Well, the only thing the ladder is listening to currently is uh, Finn with grumbling irritably about small spots uh, while like following after Alexi. And at some point as they're going down, he just like stops entirely and goes, Hey, Lexi. Can uh, you... stops. Yes, what is it? Do you, do you think like things like this built underground? These kind of caves. I mean, they're not like natural. So it's not the same. It's not the same. But like, what? Like he said, like bad stuff still comes out of here. So they're still making horrible things down here, right? That is... You guys, where you're at, suddenly here. <laughs> As Anastasia can tell you, you you. Shattered the door. It's fine, Sebastian. It's fine. Sorry. Just keep, keep going. Ale Alexi will take a moment and he'll like feel the wall. Is it like rock or is it like this weird smooth rock that? It's it's a, a large tube of metal, metal with with a variety of sections. That's like, it looks like, you know, that it's bolted and there's like lines for each like panel of uh, metal that goes down. I must admit, it does not feel like any cave I've ever been. I think you are fine. <laughs> Muttered conversation about dens of evil <laughs> under his breath. Uh, Sebastian kind of, he only goes through the door to make space. <laughs> he doesn't continue on, he's waiting for everyone else. He's just, now there's a little more room. Okay. I'm assuming it's dark on the other side too. Yes, it's pitch black. Tink, 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 tink. Oh. I must admit, I commend all of your bravery, but uh, I'm just... And he's going to go and light a torch. <laughs> doesn't know why they're staying in the dark down here. Oh, know. wait, 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 wait. Instead of torch, maybe lamp? A bit less. Last that, is, that is true. We do we have the, the lamp as well. But he kind of like feels forward and probably like accidentally bumps Anastasia in the face. It's okay. The light goes on. He's like, Ugh. this is the reason. Also, Sebastian stepped away. He didn't want anyone bumping into him. So he's there's space. Before the light showed up in his face, was there anything he could see beyond the door once it was broken? Yes. So once you once the door is broken, uh, you hear Anastasia's soft. Uh, steps as he kind of dropped down the rest of the, the bars and walks in. Uh, you see a, a strange room that's got very smooth floor. There is some kind of desk or counter. Uh, there is another metal door, but this one actually has a handle on it. And uh, you see a chamber in front of you, a chamber to the left, and a chamber to the right. Uh, all of them, their doors are currently shut. And you also knows. see these strange tubes on the ceiling. Like glass tubes, metal-like tubes? It's hard to tell because it's pitch black. They appear to be glass. They're very smooth. Okay. And I still can't hear anything aside from my companions. At this point, yeah, that's all you can hear. Okay. Oh, there's a variety of chairs in this room as well. Like, against the wall. Kind of like a waiting room. Are they... F more modern? Does that make sense? Uh, the chairs are made of a... not wood. They're, they're made of a, a dense material, uh, somewhat lightweight, with uh, what appear to be metal legs.
kind of like looks at the chair for a moment is off put a little bit that it's not like the fancier chairs he's seen in the uh in Anastasia's household or the ones he's normally accustomed to but kind of shrugs it off oh if you if you're down here at this point then uh you can see there's blue chairs which is you know interesting um they have strange metal like wire legs uh this room is strange for a variety of reasons one the floor is white uh the walls are kind of like uh, geometric there it, it's straight but it seems like there's just solid uh solid gray walls and they kind of uh it's got a very geometric feel to it like there's different sections and uh, the walls kind of curve and, and kind of just leave open spaces for no reason. It's kind of like you go into like an art museum and they have a very like geometric looking room. And it's just kind of got that feel to it. Uh, the countertop is white. It seems to be like a wood paneling on it though. And uh, the doors in front and to the left and to the right uh, are all like solid metal doors with thick bolts kind of rimming around it. These are reinforced doors. And just on the other side of the door that you guys just came through, you see a box with a metal handle uh, that you would, you know, shift down. But I uh, owe you an apology. It, it does seem to be bigger than it actually was. I see, kind of floats forward, like now that with the light, like looking around the room, trying to remember uh, at least the layout of this place from when he's been. You know, at the very least, that the frontward most facing door leads to the testing area. This place looks ugly. Who would want to live here? Dead. Well, out of a mix of curiosity, he's going to open that uh, door that leads to the testing area. Another reason he's here is because there might be good uh, equipment that they can use. He's going to make you shatter every single door in this facility. Um, Fortunately not. Uh, you go up and you open the door. It does so easily. Uh, you see a long hallway that kind of slopes down. Though the roof stays the same height, so it actually, like, the room gains uh, a vertical amount as you kind of enter into this hallway. And you know that there's this long kind of hallway that leads out to the observer observation room. Do you proceed? He also wants to get it, see if he can get a feel for what happened after he's gone. Kind of wants to know who made it out. Okay. As you kind of begin moving out forward, uh, you're floating down and you're kind of fast approaching the observation room, which is, it's a room that has the one-way mirrors that kind of look out. Uh, there's all kinds of like tech stuff around from what you remember. They have those chairs that you sit in and you can actually like rotate around, which is really cool. Hey, in a world that doesn't have that, that's that's really interesting. That's what I'm thinking about. Just like, oh shit, these chairs spin. Oh fuck. Oh, I thought I thought he was thinking of ah uh, yes, yeah, Sebastian has found his throne and was gonna sit and then push himself psychokinetically. <laughs> uh, but as you approach, a foul smell hits the air. 
very stagnant, but almost as if like there's just a certain range to it. And as you approach, you smell, this time, not rotting food, but something else. Oh, as, somebody left their gross shoes in here. As you guys are approaching, uh, you can see that there's a variety of these small chairs in front of these very strange looking tables with all these little knobs on them. And there are two individuals whose heads have been completely exploded and their bodies are just back leaning back on the chairs. Two corpses, apparently men. Hey, Sebastian. Yeah. Can somebody do that to people's heads, or is those are those the machines? He kind of like looks around, just uh, if I had to guess, I'm pretty sure that was a somebody who did this. You can't see into the testing chambers as blood coats the windows. Mm. From the inside, from the men's who had exploded. Are there any like records kept in this this room? Uh, looking around the room, you just see a large number of weird tables and knobs on them, and familiar-ish to you guys, uh, paneled like glass viewing screens. None of them are currently emanating any light. Yeah. Is that familiar to us? Yes, the uh, the Temple of the Scoured Eye has these. Oh, that's fair. Is there any uh, other defining features like on the bodies, like the clothes they're wearing or whatever? Um, yeah, somewhat. The clothes they're wearing are very interesting. As you're looking them over, they look high quality made. Uh, the seams are very tight. The colors are interesting. They they got pockets on them, seamed on uh, seamed on it. But most of all, the the materials is very fine. Does it look like like uh like a uniform that Southerners would wear, sort of thing? I mean, you've seen a northern Northerner with this, so yes. yes. Oh, fair. Can I guess what the material is? Uh, sure. If you have appraisal. you do it actually came up i think Am no I... I don't have appraisal specifically strangely enough i have more knowledge on occult and herbs than i do appraising things we each have our own interests no well, family and knights they're not going to teach you how to price stuff Any... Their outfits are uniform, but there's anything that differentiates them as far as outfits go, since they're obviously their obvious what would have been facial features are gone. Their outfits are mostly the same. They do appear to have some kind of necklace, though. Uh, cloth make has a strange, smooth... Uh, like portrait on it that's covered in blood. Anything from them we could make use of? Looks at Sebastian. He gives it kind of like a once over. Does he think? You know, 
those cards that they have on their chest allows them to open doors. E the one of the cards off their neck just kind of floats over as he grabs one. These will. The face is obscured by the blood splatter on the front. When the card flips around, you see a strange white background with a series of black bars. Scan the QR code. Maybe you'll get a coupon. But, uh... Probably should continue on. <laughs> Hopefully the thing that did this isn't in this uh this area. So uh obviously this place is abandoned, Alex. Come on. Obviously. You see there's two doors. One to the left and one to the right. Uh you know that these doors lead specifically uh one leads into the testing chambers where they you would go to, you know run your uh your your variety of uh scenarios and the other it leads to the uh sleeping quarters for all the test subjects just gonna check out the sleeping quarters real quick Okay, one second. Been with politely helicopter moms around you. Doesn't touch. So you go over, there's another panel, this one much bigger than the one at the front door. Uh, you place a card upon it. Nothing happens. They said it opened the door. I thought it did. And he's gonna <laughs> keep at it for a little bit. So he hands you like the other one if he's supposed to do it right. That's the other card. Doesn't seem to work. It's strange, but you think that uh, probably the lack of power here is preventing it from working. That makes sense. He may need to find a way to turn everything back on. Wow. I'm unsure. Alright, um... Well, like... Either... Well, it needs fuel of some sort, right? I assume so. So where would the fuel go? Thinking back, you don't have access to much of the facilities so far. The only thing you can remember so is the two doors at the entry area that you have uh, not gone through yet. We're probably going to have to go back. That was the first time we backtracked. It's fine. He backs up to let you pass first. So, you go back to the entry area, the foyer, if you will. And there's a door to your left and to your right. Let's go left. Okay. Um, heading around to the left, you come to a large, uh, large strange room that has a bunch of weird machines and cages. Not droid machines per se, but some some. There's a bunch of cords. Uh, similar to like those panels that you saw in the observation room but they're all in these cages for some reason and there's a lot of them in the center and then lining some of the walls do you have science by chance no so this Few in situations or science would be really helpful right now. Yeah. Hmm. 
Is there any wording around? Yeah. I was about to joke, is there just a side that says, like, generator room? Uh, each of the doors to these cages have a small white tag on them. Uh, that give a, a, a series of letters and numbers. Yeah. Uh, small shot in the dark, but these aren't like the, uh, the, the numerical tags that people, uh, us in the experiment got, right? No, this is very yeah. different. Okay. Any other doors in this room? Or is it just this room? Just this room. There's these machines inside of cages, right? Yep. yep. But not like the battle droid drone thing, no, but no. it's more like the uh, thing. And they have a cord. They have a. You said they had a cord on them? They have yeah. lots of cords that kind of run from like one to another. From like top to bottom. You know how hard it is to explain these kind of things. Yeah, really no, I'll right, right saying it. <laughs> yeah. But the amount of confusion you guys have is appropriate, so it works. Yeah. Uh then I guess just try the other door, like the the one on the right. Okay, so you go back out you and can. you go and open this other door. And you see a large room filled with a, a large amount of filing cabinets. Then was just looking over the boxes, trying to figure out there's some type of pattern. Maybe you have to weave the pieces right? Or do they have to be removed? Are they all attached? Some of the machines have little knobs or buttons on them. Clicks. You have to open the cage first. Oh, uh, okay. Can't do that. Can't reach. Yeah. Um, How do you open the cages? I, I assume they might be hooked up to the power. Uh, no, they have little oh. keyholes. And not a knob, but like a, a section you can grab and pull open. Hmm. And keys exist at this time, right? Keys? Like actual keys. Yes. I don't know. We'll go check the bodies for like a ring of keys or something. Okay. Check the little office area for him. Might as well. So it'll take a minute for Alexa to do that. You're in this room full of filing cabinets. Uh, just looking over anything. Kind of wants to find any in information of, uh, inf things that have happened, like, since he left. See if there's, uh, any reports on, uh, like, I guess the end of the experiment. Well, the majority of these filing cabinets have, uh, you know... It's like A through D, yeah. C through whatever. Um, there is about 10 filing cabinets in all in this room with some tables and uh, a dead potted plant. Oh no, not the potted plant. They've gone too far. The oh no, Garby. <laughs> oh no, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there seem to be some cabinets and in these cabinets seem to be Office supplies, to say the least. Uh, stationary writing There's pens. There's a stapler and we're like, what is this? What arcane magics is this? Uh, I was just about to describe a stapler. <laughs> <laughs> but you just stole that from me. You see these strange V-shaped constructs. I think it's a very ineffective crossbow. Click. click. Oh, yeah. That yeah clicks it. <laughs> As uh, southerner <laughs> weapons. Hold on, maybe maybe it's a melee, not range. <laughs> so they're, they're, oh god! As they're playing with the fucking staplers. Uh, Sebastian's gonna look through the cabinets and 
you know what? He's going to look through the F section, see if he can find his name. The F section, you say? Yeah. Oh, let's write your last name. Well, uh, looking through the F section, you find a large folder that says finances. Oh, that's fair. Is there a number section? There is a number section that's zero through nine. Personal we'll look for uh, somewhere else. zero seven seven. Okay. Looking through, you do find a good majority of the numbers. Um, some of them you pull out and they have a, a child's face, most of which have a large printed deceased on front of their, their pro pro profile. Yeah, a few of them are being tossed onto the table behind him, like, uh, as, as he's going through, just a few pa like pages just fucking floating themselves, like, out of the way, kind of tossing themselves on the table as if he's just, like, tossing them back. Uh, a couple numbers you stick out to. Yeah. It's gonna get to, it's gonna get his, it's gonna be stamped with punk-ass bitch. <laughs> I will get better at this one day, but I totally uh, did not write down the numbers of the other children who are with uh, you. One that you need to, like, I'd say worry about is uh, I checked this because I was going to ask about it. Uh, it is 091 is uh, that bastard, the uh, rival tactician. And the other one I got was 108, which was the leader of his little squad. Of your squad or his? Mine. We were in the same squad. Okay. Or, yeah, but he did his own thing. But yeah, th those are the three numbers that he's really worried about. Uh, 108 is deceased. Say, for what reason? Um, Looking over the, the, the profile, there is, you flip them over, and there's kind of like a, a log of their accomplishments. And sometime... Uh, you see a section towards the end that says uh, due to mental uh, instability upon the let's see the loss of your number because I don't have that one. Zero today. seven seven. Zero seven seven. Uh, was unable to perform to satisfactory levels. Uh, was used as marker for numbers uh, zero seven three zero six six and zero nine two. Kind of just looking over this file, just uh just swallows and uh shame and he puts it behind him with care or more care i'm not there anyway i'm going to get a ring of keys as uh as you're looking through numbers are missing from this there is a range of about 203 test subjects. Uh, something you do r realize is that in your section, you seem to be the post-60 group. Uh, the pre-60 group, the, the, the 1 through 50, seem to have been about three years before your group entirely. Uh, this informs you, because each group is roughly about 50 kids or so, that they ended up running at least through another uh, two groups. Some of the numbers are missing. 
but the strange part is is somewhere in the uh, the last group or so there's just a bunch of profiles there that are uncompleted they are neither deceased nor removed as you're assuming that removed files might be people who have been graduated from the program does he see his number your number is missing it is the same as 091 Have we pulled them for records, or we destroyed them, took them to study themselves? He just kind of, uh... There's a deep sigh as he shuts the cabinet. A little harder <laughs> than he should have, probably. I wonder what shade is in the incident report. There's gotta be an incident report file somewhere that's like, So, guess we gotta look at our layout, cause one of them got away. Well, before you think about doing that, uh, Alexi arrives with the keys. As, as you're coming, you hear from the, that room a loud from a cabinet being slammed. Oh, okay. I understand. <laughs> I thought it was like a whole other room that we hadn't gone into yet. No, no. He walks in. He's like, so I was correct. We forgot to relieve them of their keys and he kind of like jangles this uh about how many are in this ring in this room ring on the ring uh, ring oh i'm sorry i misunderstood uh not too many about five keys i don't know if they would go to those but it might help as he's rifling through other cabinets he is actually looking for uh any sort of incident reports, escape attempts, just anything in that category. The eye cabinet is almost exclusively eye, as there is a wide variety of incident reports. I mean, to look Let's for see, some of later. <laughs> he, he's rifling through, just maybe he'll see it. Whoopsie, they killed some staff. I assume they're organized by date, as maybe. Exactly. Uh, the hard part is you don't know what day it was that you actually left. Nor did you really was... find out in the years since then. Yeah. He, he's at least going to look back uh, at least from a range to four to five years. Well, you don't know what four to five years is. I don't even think your character knows what the current year is. I don't think he does. <laughs> <laughs> well, then worth a shot, he turns to everyone. What year is it? They all yeah. give you different answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get like the Goldarian like calendar from Finwith. <laughs> uh, well, I don't even know if Anastasia would use the modern one or not, or if you just have no, the Vitello's version of like, going... it's somewhere in this century. What does it matter? <laughs> it would be the Vitello version because that's all he knows. It's probably some like archaic version of keeping the time. It helps. Our calendar says January 25th, 1003. I don't know what a calendar is. <laughs> uh, it's oh, shit. Hangout. That calendar needs to be adjusted heavily. But, uh... <laughs> well, I, I don't... Okay, I don't know. They might use different years. Just go to the last little file thingy. Actually, yeah. The, what's the last calendar? Uh, last incident that happened here? Maybe it's a little like, nice, nice little thing of foreshadowing. I don't think anybody okay. would have the time to write an incident report. <laughs> I mean, just maybe they're like, ah, some, some kind of fuck he's happening. We were told to ignore it. Um, the incident reports are, if anything, bland, as they're very straight and to the point. Uh, it gives... Workman's comp for somebody getting burnt by a coffee machine. It gives the data at the top, the uh, incident filer, their name, followed by a abbreviated type of incidents which, unfortunately, you don't know where the keyword is. Some of them are easy to understand, uh, like, um, like uh, CMH or CHM uh, backslash spill, and the end support would have a chemical spill, you know, 
So some of them are abbreviated and are harder to understand. The last one, in particular, um, says uh, for the, in the incident section is personnel. And it reports... 199 has shown great amounts of stress and is thus uh, producing large amounts of psychic feedback. Their abilities are becoming uncontrollable and are becoming damaging to the surrounding uh, environments and other uh, items, items of value. Does he uh, know who 99 is? 199. Oh, 199. 199. You do not. That was not in your generation. Yeah. 199 One. will be put into uh, catatonic stasis until the effects of incidents uh, what would it be? Uh, 319 9 uh, no, no, no. 1001. 319 1001. For record, this one is at uh seven sixteen one zero zero two this place got abandoned very recently yeah uh he keeps going like down the list he's going until he sees uh zero seven seven Zero seven seven. That's my number. That these aren't going by your numbers. That's the incident report number. Oh, oh incident right. reports go by date. Oh, okay, I was assuming they were like visible. See if you could just like skim it, like catch. There's just a zero seven seven there. Uh, unfortunately, you need to read the actual incident to get any information on whom it may be. That's fair. Then so you just have to uh, go back and look for five years back. I think you said. Yeah. Four or five. Uh, granted, none of y'all know what date it is, so you could go five years back from the last reported date. But you can see if there's any numbers you do recognize uh, mentioned in the incident reports, like other ones who have died, or at least because you would have been numbered roughly about when you like joined the program in some type of order. So if somebody is way before your group or way after your group, then you know you're not close yet. And yeah, he's gonna try that. Though he's gonna like lowball it a bit instead of going back like full five, it's gonna go back like four years. I've changed the date. Yeah. Um so you go back about four years. Uh, this puts you roughly in the, uh, there's not as many incident reports that involve personnel at this point, but you do manage to find one, and this is somewhere in the 117 range, so you're getting close. You keep going back, eventually you kind of come across, uh, an incident report that's about 078. And uh, you begin rifling around through there. And at the date of uh, 05, 11, uh, 997, you find a report that has a personnel. Uh, that has your number on it. Reading it over. An incident has occurred where 077 
going beyond the expected limitations of their psychic uh, matrices was able to break free from their holding cell and escape with little interaction from staff. Staffing has been inquired as to the reason for the lack of supervision and uh, guard, many of which stating that uh, for some reason or another, they were out on some personal business using the restroom, eating food, not properly communicating, and leaving an opening. This seems strangely timed. And there's a possibility that 077 has some form of uh, unknown matrix that might revolve around predictions or altering outcomes. Cox has had at this part. Due to standard protocol, some, an incident like this should not have occurred. Nor should 077 have been able to leave the living quarters without a uh, proper ID or tag from staff. Upon, uh, upon taking counts, all staff has had their name cards available and on hand and none have been found to be missing. Hmm. You remember the day and you had very strategically thought about the best opportunity to do all this. All you needed was for someone to leave the door open for a period of time enough for you to escape. Confident enough in your abilities to do so, you figured that at the very least it would be better than dying in the next test. Which you were very sure was going to occur as as what happened with uh oh wait one. The other uh, one. Oh, nine one? No, 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 the other one. The other number. Uh, the only one I have written down is a 108. 108, 108. is he's the leader. Oh, this. okay, sorry. 108, yeah. So for 108, uh, you were going to be used as a mark for adjusting and, and marking you know, the general progress of a group. And one day, as you were, you were obser observing keenly, the door was left open. You inspected no one was around, and you made a very mad dash for it. Also, you thought you might have just gotten lucky. Like, nods to himself a little bit. Then he just, without turning over, just kind of speaks up. Just, um... Can I see the lantern for a second? Yeah. Brings it over. And he kind of just kind of reaches over, hits the little latch, and puts the corner of this, uh file uh touching the flame i quickly catches the list and he just tosses it to the floor are there any others you want to get rid of i'm unsure how often my my uh designation is mentioned but i have a feeling i should play it safe as he takes the whole incident report file does his best to like pop it out and upends it does he what Like, all the incidents? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's relatively easy to do. They have kind of like these uh, fabric holders that you can just, like, pull out of the cabinet. And you dump it all out. 
he's going to work down the line. He's going to uh, upend all the files into a massive pile. From all the cabinets? From all the cabinets. What if we need a some faster of it? way yeah. would just be to drop a lit one into each cabinet and rather than you know, dropping, dropping them all the floor and everything. I would pose. Did you want to look at 199's uh, file? Oh, that's actually a good point. Yeah, I yeah, I would, yeah. yeah and you might, we might want to come back for more information, so you might want to do it later. Fair point. Which Finwith actually does, like, are you sure you don't want to wait in case it can help later? As he's, like, dumping another file onto the ground, he kind of, like, pauses. I know you're upset, so... Right. Figured I'd ask. Then what's going to help you be logical in your emotional time, sort of. Takes a very just... So who's... Who's the one who hurt you? Is there not... Their file's missing. I'd help you look for stuff, but I can't read any of these. He just nods. What was the number for the last one? 199. And actually, uh, because of... Um... Oh yeah, there's an office supply thing. As just he floats over like a pen. And he's gonna like flip over a file. And he just writes down 077-091-108-199. And just shows that to Finwith. Okay, so these runs are free to you. If you see any of these, please let me know. Gives him a good look. Okay. Even just gives you the, the paper yeah. so you can like keep looking back at it. Doesn't expect you to like remember. But yeah, he pulls it up. That's the way. But Lexi found the keys, so we might be able to turn on the stuff now. Hopefully. Well, Anastasia's gonna look for. One nine are the well, one mentioned in the last incident report. One nine. It takes some time as it was recently dumped on the floor. I uh, moved the incident report about the uh the personnel files. You hadn't yeah. got that at the end. Oh, were you looking for the personnel for one nine nine? Yeah, he's looking for the personnel one. Oh, okay. Sure. Uh looking over the report one nine nine. Uh you open the file up. Uh it has a stamp on it that says stasis. It's in a cool blue ink. And uh, looking it over, 199. Young girl. Uh, the, the picture shows she can't be more than eight years old. And uh, looking over the file. Uh, you see that under her uh, matrices index, or her MI, uh, is cryokinesis. Uh, it shows a bunch of information that's relatively irrelevant to you, like her blood type. Um, something. It's actually very relevant to Anastasia. It depends on tasty. <laughs> Unfortunately, they don't classify by AB negative or AB positive. Oh, damn. Just Edisos here looking over this file. She says, hmm, good vintage. And just keep reading down. It's not actually, he's just trying to make a joke for once. It lists a, a uh, number of her observed abilities. Uh, which include uh, the ability to freeze bodies to temperatures of negative 100 degrees Celsius to detect temperatures to a range of 100 feet to resist 
cold temperatures, even liquid nitrogen. And the ability to crystallize fluids and uh, use them as weapons. Her MI class, as shown on the page, is eight. You don't know what that means. Do I know what that means? You don't know what that means. What's, um, oh wait, for whatever's, what are they at? Sorry, what? Who? The, the leader of, um, Sebastian's group. What's this? Oh, 108. Or 108. Yeah, 108. 108, okay. Uh, what's his MI class? Mm -hmm. His MI class is four. Uh, his MI index, or his M his MI, is uh, physical increase. Tough boy. And his has the deceased on it, or does it have his any is deceased? Yes. Yeah. Other than that, uh, the personnel file does not have too much. If you flip over to uh, 199's uh, log in the back, you see that generally 199 performed well in tests and was, uh, one of the reports says, due for imminent uh, graduation. But then the final report was, uh, suffering severe uh, mental stress due to unknown factors placed in stasis until uh, incidents uh... 319-1001 yep has been resolved Was there a stasis chamber? As he looks at Sebastian, trying to figure out what the heck a stasis chamber is. It was nothing that you were made aware of. Your I've whole life result was predominantly within the living quarters and the testing chambers. I'm not the, familiar with anything outside of my living station and the test chamber. Well, this is where they keep all their um, like stories and stuff, right? So is there like a... Um, like when you teach someone something, you have to take the key? Stability. They have to be able to teach people who, who run this, right? So... Maybe it's somewhere in here. Kind of knocks his knuckles into one of the file cabinets. Possibly. <laughs> Rifles through for the employee's handbook. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of stuff to look through. Yeah. Are there any posters for like workplace safety? No, there's like, a hang in there, kitten. You know, help resources for Black Sun employees. Like many of this, much of this building, it is very bland and without much. They're heartless. They're experimenting on children. You know what, here. You can keep looking through things. Uh, Alexi, do you want to go poke buttons and see if anything bad happens? 
I just saw Alex's eyes close. <laughs> I'm imagining having to run down there in case something happens. It's admittedly I don't know much about these uh, machines you guys I mean, are. He said he doesn't either. I suppose that's true. We could check the fences uh, here and he'll uh, light a torch and he's like do you want the torch or the lantern? Lantern would be easier. Uh oh, go to the other room. I'm yeah. fiddling with keys and boxes. If the keys even work for that matter. Well, I mean, we can't advance until we turn on the uh, power, so. One of the keys <laughs> has to fit a box. It seems very game mechanic y. It's very Resident Evil here. Gotta find the right key. Is it a blue key, yellow key card? Fuck. It's also just turning night, even though we're not, like, outside anymore. We have the awareness that it's dark and creepy. This is so convenient. All the keys are labeled. <laughs> Left balcony key. What? <laughs> old bathroom key? What's in the bathroom? Opens. Oh, it's a gun. It was it old when they made the key? I don't understand. <laughs> I just used the key, and now there's a trash can icon next to it? What? The red room? Oh. oh. Why did you make everything in here red? I don't think this key would be useful later. Toss? Oh, yeah, look, sure. herbs. <laughs> Time to turn those into explosive ammo somehow. Red herbs, blue Looking herbs, at you, village. green herbs. Anywho. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm going to need a search from Anastasia and from... Uh, Sebastian. Uh, and I'm going to need an intelligence roll from Alexi and Finwith. Boy. Let's do this. Intelligence power. Ten. Um, and that's just plus the intelligence, so. Yep. Fourteen. Okay. I rolled a four. I rolled an eight. <laughs> And luckily, Finwith isn't actually that dumb, as low as this is willpower. Weird not having cracked perception anymore. All right. So for those who are searching, uh, Sebastian, what are you looking for? Uh, he's, a, he's looking along what... Uh, uh, Finn with suggested if there's like some sort of key, uh, any sort of just file that pertains to understanding the files. Maybe any sort of like, like actually handbook on how this fucking works. When you're filling out an incident report, here's what's required. Yeah. Something to help decipher the code and like the numbers they use. Uh, well, you find a card. Uh, kind of right inside the cabinets and as you pull it up uh, the card itself it's like an index card not very fancy it just has vaguely written everything within the cabinet it'll say something like personnel files uh, syllabus incident reports uh, finances supplies all that kind of stuff so you find that at the front of each of the, these cabinets, they will tell you what's in the cabinet. Okay, that might make this easier then. Uh, and Anastasia. Seeing as 199 was in stasis, he's curious to see if any other of these personnel were put into stasis. So he's going to look for anything that says stasis stamped on it. All right. Fortunately for you, um, all those put into stasis had a nice big blue stasis mark on their file. So it doesn't take too long. You find about 16 cases of individuals who were put into stasis. Any of them stand out from the other as far as abilities go? Or we already know 199 had a mental stress that forced them to go into stasis. Every case has uh, is mentally stress induced, based on incident report. You know, the one zero zero one one. People 
people botching their psychic potential roll. Do they all look about the same age? Uh, roughly. They all appear to be children. Uh, their ages range from anywhere from five years old to 13. Not gonna lie, Sebastian, I'm glad this place is turned and shut down. As am I. No child should have to go through whatever they've put you through. Kind of like look, pause. It's kind of like staring it like forward instead of down on something. Just maybe about to say something, but just kind of looks back down again. Keeps going. In the other room, uh, you guys find that it's not hard to find the keys to open these things up, but when you do, it's just more. You just find a bunch of cords, some buttons that you flick, and they don't seem to do anything. It takes a little bit of rummaging, but fortunately, Finwith uh, manages to come come across a particular switch. It is it has... red or have a big label? No. Oh. It is bigger than some, uh, and it has strange symbols over the top that read PWR. Granted, you probably don't even know what that is. No, I don't know Latin letters. So... <laughs> he is completely illiterate when it comes to Latin. He knows the shape of, like... Um, like in, like he knows what in is in a couple other places, like general store, he roughly knows what that looks like, but he, he can't read Latin at all. You, you flip it, it seems it's a little bit heavier than some of the other switches, and as you do so, suddenly the tubes on the ceiling kind of click, click, bzzz, as the fluorescent lights above turn on. Oh god, that's probably painful for your first time saying that ever. Well, yes, and you guys have been in almost pure darkness this entire time. So outside uh, of spots everywhere. Yeah. You just see this large purple line when every time you close your eyes now. Ooh. Uh, but hey, I did it. Do notice next to it there's a bunch of these strange tubes uh that have wire in them. And most of them are lit up, like the ceiling light. Uh, a couple of them are dim, though. Um, the ones that are dim, one reads... Well, you can't read it. Never mind, so you don't know. <laughs> I can't if you look over Sebastian, there. Sebastian! I got it. I think most of it, there's a couple that are off. Do the lights turn on in here? Yes. God, so bright. Thank you. You're welcome. And sure, I'll look over the faded switches. He like walks over and is like, What did you press to turn that on? Oh, this switch here. He like clicks it. Uh, there are three bulbs that are not currently lit. One reads, TRM hyphen 003. Another one reads um, SLP hyphen uh, CH. And the final one reads um, SA or STAT hyphen RM. Blue, ominous. Just you know, verify. It's it's very hard to do this in a way that makes sense. It does mm -hmm. if you're an electrician. Yep. I'm dumbing it down a little bit though. I don't know what the, what the fuck that all means. I don't know where electricity comes from. Plus, as far as anybody's concerned, <laughs> hi, my name is Fidwith, and I live in the mountains. You'll jot that down to memory, and I mean, I put it in my notes. You guys have stationary and pens <laughs> available to you in-game. Yeah, 
Oh yeah, I guess I'll go retrieve some of them. You know, we could bring all this back to the floating temple. We we could always have it with us. Just paper and supplies. I don't think they have that up there. Wish to keep any of it. You can take it. They're not using it. Then what discovers how uh, nice actual pencils are for drawing compared to charcoal. Do the rest of the machines have that same button that Fenwith pressed? No, most of them don't. I have to ask, is there a copy machine in this room that we're in? <laughs> yes. You guys don't know what it does, but yes. <laughs> it does the last printed thing and they both just flinch. <laughs> a fax comes in from Dillacart. It's just, it just prints out Lucanor's face. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no, he sent us this face. Ah, the face of dissatisfaction. No, somebody had uh, printed it out to like hang up on their cubicle, do it for him. Alex is right, someone at some point does play with the staple removers. It Chopping is... it up and down like, looks like a little mouth. Why, why oh yeah, no, he absolutely like, click, click, click. looks like a little dragon face. <laughs> oh, that's a yeah. fun noise. Stick, 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 stick. I really love the idea of a bunch of fucking like high powered adventurers playing with office equipment. Y'all are near Arbiter level, I might have. <laughs> Benwith is taking the stapler removal. He would absolutely love that. You're going to be walking, and he's just going to be stimming with that click, 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 click. Someone has no. a pen clicking it, like... No, Finally, it's... Sebastian just breaks. Stop! You know what the funniest part is? That's going to be, like, useful somewhere down the line. <laughs> it's just, like, you need to do, like, a minute, like, eh, eh. <laughs> like, if it'll work with it. We can't touch it with our hands. Wait a minute. <laughs> Stable remover. Oh no, that energy has been put into the universe. Perfect. Little bit of like fucking post-it notes. I'm adding a stable removal to uh to my inventory. Hold on. Perfect. Feel free to continue. There's the ghosts of these poor people that have died horribly in this facility, and they're just sitting there like, what the fuck are they doing with the office supplies? By the way, that room that Alexi and Finwith are slash were in uh, is the server room and it has a breaker box in it. No shit. Like I said, it's I'm really hard to now. describe okay. all these things without actually telling you what they are. Yeah, yeah. Honestly. I guess they come back into the filing room and uh, with like a paper that he wrote stuff down. I am not entirely sure what uh, each of these mean, but uh, these ones didn't light up with everything else, and he, like, hands Sebastian the paper. He looks that. He looks it over. I have no idea what this means. I assume we, it's just rooms that we might not be able to get into by uh, that... Uh, he, he's trying to find the words to describe a plastic card. The weird key. Yeah. Flat one. And the flat key. Flat key works. We'll go flat key. He kind of like uh, puts down whatever file he's reading. Probably something like not very important. Just um. You have everything back on them. Yep. Yeah. So we can go down now. All right. Do you um want one of us to go in first, just in case there's anything? That would be smart. So I'll head back down. Uh, any changes in the uh, room with the two individuals? Uh, yes, a lot of the, well, the lights in the room and the panels that they're operating uh, have lit up. You see the, the, the screens 
Doing some stuff you kind of saw at the temple. You just see a bunch of weird text coming across the screens. The machines seem to be doing something. Kind of pauses for a moment. Squints down and tries to see. If it's just letters, though, then he just doesn't know what any of it means. Oh, Does it I make any sense? Stay, uh, have you gone back to bear form or since coming down they, here? He's worried that he's going to run into another tight quarters spot. Okay. So he hasn't turned into anything yet. Okay. And I figure it's probably poor form to just walk around holding a bunch of Xeon ready to go. Yeah, well, technically that you lose Xeon every time you do that, so. Yeah. What are you saying? I know you did with Key. Same as Xeon. Oh, uh. I guess also looks at the words, but if it's just like fucking gibberish. Or computer speech or whatever. It's it's, it's computer, computer code. So yeah. it's like and he's just like walks away from some weird language that these people in this uh lab spoke. Then with will hold out a hand for the key. You're speaking to us, Alex Kate. Sorry, I was actually getting my roommate to do something. I figured you might have so to the left was, if we're looking at the observation window, to the left would have been the living quarters, correct? Correct. Is there anything that's like on past the observation? On past the observation. The, the oh no, room... it's, it's, it's using the computer shape. Like looking through the window. Yeah, you can't see much because of the blood, uh, but whatever is on the other side does appear to be uh, powered as lights. Uh, stream too. Well, unless somebody wants to wipe that off. That'd be a bit of a test that's super dried on there. That would take too long. <laughs> we walk in and there's a bunch of fucking sentry turrets ready to blow our heads off that we would have seen if we had wiped blood off a window. There's a quick way to clean the window. To go to the the window. Window. Yeah, just fucking punch it. You wanted to go to the living quarters first, though, right? Yeah, just to I guess look. That's the only other place he like mem remembers. So fair. So then with Walt, would they take the card from him? I mean, you both have a card. Oh, that's oh, he had handed him, but he didn't take it. So yeah, then with will go over and like he saw him put it to the pad earlier. He'll do that. You do so. It's, Has yeah. to flip it over. Yeah. Well. I mean, you don't think the blood side would work anyway, so. He doesn't know how these things work. But fair. All right, yeah, fair. Um, but you hear, um, boop, beep. You know, like you scan something at a grocery store, and uh, the door goes, and then slides to the side. I didn't, like, lock up and go ask for help. Uh, as you see on, on this side, immediately, like almost uh, with the door frame, there's just a sheetrock wall and a very like almost under construction sections like cement and, and sheetrock and just keeps going straight in. This part was very unfurnished compared to everything else you've seen so far. It seems to go for a ways down before turning left into a room and then continuing straight and then turning at like an L junction at the far end. Okay. Well, head in. Okay. As you step through, you all hear this. So what are your friends? I didn't have any friends here. Is that coming from the hall or just like... It seems everywhere. to be coming from all around you. 
All right, well, I've fought a fucking, like, some demon lords next to a high shadow elemental. See dragons at war, like, a giggle isn't gonna freak fit without. Okay. It just kind of blinks. Moves in. As you move into the room, you fall into the ceiling. <laughs> oh, okay, I see what it was laughing at. <laughs> Devin's face there. Okay. Y'all just watch. He's just like, I'm not gonna be. It just walks forward. And then All right, that is actually kind of funny. Can he like still move up there, or is he just yeah. plastered? Okay. You move. Gravity seems to have reversed. Oh. He doesn't like fully like stand up because he's worried it's just gonna pop back down. As you stand up though, or as as, as you carefully kind of right yourself somewhat from this different perspective. Uh, it's not completely the same, though. Your hair seems to be moving as if flowing through a liquid. Hey. Sebastian. Waves from the ceiling. Sebastian floats in, too, just kind of, like, turning himself. <laughs> this levitation as he goes I think through. you could just, like, go straight through. Your hair would just go for a bit. Uh, Sebastian, I need you to make uh, no. You gotta fight an psychic agility psychic. roll, please. Agility roll? I actually have good agility, alright. Thirteen. Okay. As you go in, you feel your, your center of gravity shift, and as you're as your psychic power in innately adjusts for it, you begin to spin rapidly in place for a moment uh, before you finally manage to shunt yourself back into the room you came from. Finwith was like an arm out as if to like grab and stop you, but had obviously like pulled back. Just... <clears throat> Sorry, that's not funny. It was strange. You just went in and you just started and went and then you just managed to, to safely eject yourself back into the room you came from. He drops his uh, his psychic uh, levitation and he will uh, how do you carefully orient yourself to fucking fall to the ceiling? Acrobatics? Ah, hmm. That's a good question. How do you? Finn with me while it's just like shoves a little off the uh, the corner he's like thumped into and is going to try and go further down the hall and see if it ends or not. Uh, before you do that, there is a very kind of quiet just um Finn with me, you catch me. He stops and uh yeah. looks fucking really tense. He actually like reaches around uh, and pulls up like the mantle off, the white wolf mantle and uh, puts it over his arms. As you're doing this and everything, you find that even like that card with the lanyard attached to it is also kind of like almost weightless in this space. He will kind of walk through trying to make sure if he's going to fall, he's going to fall at Finn. <laughs> As he does so, you just watch as he just suddenly, like, and his body just flings forward and, uh, make for me a dexterity, please. Fourteen. Easy. You catch him. Yeah, I have a nine in dex. So, DC you're just 12, so. wrapped in, uh, the white wolf fur as he kind of, like, <laughs> leverages you for a moment and writes you, trying not to accidentally touch. He's still really, really tense, but at least it's not as bad as a, you've seen him. As he just takes a few deep breaths as he's like standing. Sebastian is strange. You feel whiter. <laughs> That's strange. 
Anastasia will use whatever shadow is coming off him with to step through to try and ease himself in without being shunted into the ceiling like everyone else. <laughs> he like goes to like put the mantle back on and turns around and there's <laughs> Alright, bit of warning maybe. Uh, as you do so. Um, actually you can't. There's no shadows big enough for you because of the fluorescent lights. Okay. Good to know. Well then. Try to acrobatically twist himself as he flips as he shunted towards the ceiling. Okay, go ahead. You can add some style to make it look sick as fuck. I was coincidentally gonna say, can I fall with style? Do the three-point hero landing on the uh, zero-G uh, ceiling. I don't know, could he follow the acrobatic flip with like some dance-like moves? <laughs> That is a 179 acrobatics. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> you trust in your instincts to uh, watch for you as you kind of leap into the room and dynamically twist. Uh, you fall towards the ceiling and land in a three-point stance using your hand to... Uh, Balance you. Definitely a weird feeling. Alexi, saying everybody walks in, uh, lets them walk a bit forward before he steps in as well. As it seems like it get they get to a certain point and then just go up randomly. Yeah. So not to like squish anybody he'll wait a moment and then he'll uh walk in and i would like to fall with style okay sure ben with has it too but unfortunately he was uh, not expecting gravity to turn off or reverse rather two hundred and sixty seven Jesus <clears throat> okay. Uh, as you step in, you feel your legs kind of get swept up from underneath you, and as you begin to fall, you grab the top of the door frame, and you push, and even though you kind of fell, you are right back solid on your feet, pushing yourself just the right amount to be back to a standard setting. As everyone is moving, for the most part, it feels regular, besides your hair kind of flowing in the strange fashion but for our uh, sebastian it's almost like moonwalking it's just you feel more weightless and as you step you just you you just feel lighter uh and finwith will use the uh hold the lamp out in front of him waiting for it to like sink <laughs> down or not see if he can use it to predict when it's gonna end okay as you hold the lantern out, you feel that it feels lighter to you. Um, and the lantern is lit or not lit? Uh, the lights are on now. It doesn't have to be lit anymore. Okay. So I'm sure the flames would be doing something funky. And as you guys continue in, uh, that's where we're going to have to end it, sadly. Uh. As this is a good point to stop as you guys are just entering into the facility. I'll let you know, this room is anti-gravity. Yep. It's not reverse gravity, which is very different. Uh, what happens is objects of a heavier weight fall towards the ceiling more easily than lighter objects do. So when Arthur, or when Sebastian came in, to the room oh and he was weightless he stayed in place well it wasn't necessarily that his ability pushes him off from the ground to counteract the gravity because of that and because of the way his uh his weight shifts 
it became too uncontrollable for you to uh, to safely fly through this. It's an opportunity to like uh, go into a ball and go faster. The theme plays. <laughs> And then he just vomits and just becomes a terrible mess. Exactly. That's Where how we get off? this facility. It's just Sebastian fucking spin dashes throughout it. You hear the Sonic like zip down. But yeah. No, that's just one of many crazy rooms you'll find out where reality doesn't work the way it should. Actually, out of curiosity, with going through the files, was there any psychic in stasis or anything like that that may have had anti gravity abilities or something like that? Uh, you saw gra You didn't see gravity as part of anyone's file. Okay. They might actually just still be in stasis. It might not be that person. They might have been like under the mental stress because of whoever's causing all of this. They were talking to people and things. Obviously a little bit demented here. Just a little. Just a smidgen. What happens when we put a admit, He would have laughed too. What happens when you put a cat in the reverse gravity field? It's that old... It'll, it'll slowly fall towards the ceiling. It was that old fucking like meme of, you know, a, to a piece of toast always lands butter side down, cat lands on its feet, tape the toast butter side up, toss a cat in the air and then Perfect. spins yeah. and you have infinite energy right, Vikings go. Real quick. cats do not like it when you kind of like lift them up and then you set them down on their side yeah I don't know if you like it's hard to do it because they just rotate so much only time they let you do that is if they were already on their side and you held them in a way where they kept how they're laying. Yeah. Also, I realize uh, Alexi would have fallen faster just because he's in armor and has weapons. Oh, I, I'm wearing fur armor. It's really nothing. Well, you also have a giant fuck-off sword, don't you? That's true. The thing on the he probably would have fallen the hardest because he's got the full-on black dragon armor and the breaker blade. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's the yeah. impossible superhero well, landing. I guess it depends, because it's not, like, super, super heavy. It might make up for the fact, like, you're tiny, like, you're small, and you don't have a lot of muscle mass since Vitello are just fucking weird. So, actually, no, you're probably about the same weight with your armor and weapons as they are with just sheer bulk. Muscle adds up mm -hmm. pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I don't know, if he keeps feeding off him with blood, he may start looking like Finn with <laughs> as far as bolt goes. Starts just Protein growing. shake. <laughs> Suddenly starts growing facial hair. Actually, no, uh, Finn with is completely smooth faced. He can't grow a beard. That's true. I actually do have an older adult version of Anastasi pictured in my head, and he does have a slight beard coming in, much like his father. Lauren T is just like, ugh. What's that peach fuzz? Shut up. Try to grow a beard. I'm gonna be a real bad. God, it's the teenager like trying to grow a beard and mustache. Yeah, this just doesn't work. I'm sure nothing can go wrong in this facility. What happens when we put a bunch of mentally broken psychics in one area? Let's see what happens. Yeah, nothing bad. Of course. I mean, look, it shit out Sebastian, and he's That's perfectly fun. stable and well adapted. Twitch, His coping Twitch. mechanisms, oh, envy of the world. Devin, don't touch me! <laughs> <laughs> you need to see Verp from uh, one of uh, oh, I our oh, yeah, yeah, we were playing Kitty Cat Pew Pew, and he uh, showed me the video. The feet was Bale's favorite part. Oh, oh yeah, the, the wet slap of verb running was just. <laughs> Have you shown Alex? I sent it to him. I don't know. I haven't watched it. it because I started watching Dimension Twenty stuff. 
Oh, I see. Watching yeah. their uh, fucking Escape from the Blood Keep series, which holy fuck. the Scream Beast is my favorite character. I love the Scream. I love Jim. I love just the uh, the first fucking combat. It, or not, I don't know if it was. I remember. It was, yeah, it was the first inside the fucking scary volcano, where just so much shit happened every turn. It was insane. God, I fucking. I also the joke of really strange creature has a very normal way of speaking. Never is not funny to me and john feathers i will i would die for him i would die for john feathers no verp is this funny frog man and he just doesn't like being touched and he's so fucking funny i by tomato gaming coincidentally i think you've mentioned tomato gaming i have i don't know who that is okay so it's just Tears of Grace. The only, the only that's arcane... Why that's familiar. A friend of mine really, really liked his... Uh... The arcane uh, stream I know of is the one with like Ludwig, Critical, a Donkey, and Takahata. Because those are the only ones I know. The most meme-worthy group, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I watch all of them. Yeah. I like the taste. That's he just drinks a potion, but with no health lost whatsoever. Yeah. Like I said, I was telling Devin, I'm so glad I'm friends with Alex. I think I really get a, a good view into the Zoomer humor style just by being friends. <laughs> glad I can give you this perspective. Anywho, let's do experience and get everything done before Suzanne has to vamoose. So, uh, general interpretation. Not a lot of roleplay this session, unfortunately. Um... Not, not a lot really done. I'll have you experience. know, I roleplayed uh, excellently clicking a stapler remover. <laughs> 10 experience for everyone. Uh, no difficult actions. Hey, I leveled up, finally. I forgot that you left me with 8 missing. Oof. Woof. Uh, no difficult actions, good ideas, I'll give you guys, I'll give you guys, uh, three experience points. You had some decent ideas while I'm searching through everything. You guys have been finding a good amount of clues, a good amount of information. Um, we should have looked for the members of, uh, the Stasis Ones party. Oh, yeah. Their trio. Oh, that would be a good idea, yeah. We can always go back. It doesn't have the my notes are terrible, and I don't have anything written down. That's the curse of Which your improv GM. While um, going through the things, I was like, on one hand, I wanted this information. On the other hand, I was like, I really hope he's not making up all this classification shit on the spot. Because that's a lot to do. <laughs> yeah, you better go back and listen to that episode and take a... Uh... Notes I cannot imagine. I mean, if you need the numbers, I wrote down the specific numbers. So if you if you I need remember them, them so. right now. The problem is, if I play a month from now, I won't. <laughs> I'm saying at least if you're going over everything later and you need those numbers, hit me up. I'll I will play. take the the important date that was mentioned. I think it was like oh something. I have that. It's oh five something, right? Oh five eleven nine nine seven. And that was for Sebastian's incident. My escape. No, yep, I need the escape. other one. Oh. That was an O. Uh, that was an O O one. Oh, <laughs> that was. The being put in stasis. It was, it was really early. It was like. Uh, oh, then that was um five. I forget what the other one was. Uh, one 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 zero zero two. I think it was o three o three nineteen one zero zero one. Yep, that's what it was. Perfect. See, I wrote that down as like a string of numbers, as if that was the like a, a code, not the date. That's why it took me a second. I will alter that. Perfect. That's the most important one. <clears throat> anyway.
Anyway, so. Other than that, everything is pretty straightforward. <clears throat> Especially because a lot of the stuff you'll just find out innately through uh, exploration. But, um, yeah. So, no combat. No combat awards. No facing. Oh, time spent. Oh, time spent, yes. Three experience points for that. So, Anastasia, you get one. So, fuck you, vampire. This is a werewolf party. So rude. Nah, that's fine. Stepping through shadows was fun while I could do it. Yeah, those fluorescent lights are going to be a pain for you. Because they do one thing right, which is highly illuminate areas. Yep. You can always bust a light if you want. That's what I was considering in combat. Actually, that is a good question. How far is it between the floor and the ceiling for us in this facility? Or is it change varying in the room? It varies from room to room. In some areas, it can be 20 feet up. In others, it can be 8. Okay. What about the hallway we're in right now? Would that be about 10 It's a 10-foot ceiling, so, yeah. Okay. Not too bad. I can't wait. There's going to be so many really fucky rooms for you guys to have to deal with. Oh yeah, no, this is a psychic funhouse. Meets, like, Resident Evil Asylum. Good, that's what I'm going for. I know you are. Uh, as soon as you <laughs> said you come across a little cottage in a clearing, a pleasant, uh, and it's starting to get to night, I'm like, this is literally how horror games start. You're like, ah, oh, the false sense of security before the opening of it. Okay, cool. And of course, it's getting to nighttime. I mean, Sebastian's dream should have been the highest indicator of what your time here was going to be like. Oh yeah, it was a <laughs> fucked up thing in a goddamn, uh... What are they? Fucking... The jackets. Straight jacket? Yeah, there we go. I couldn't yeah. figure the first one. Not to mention the last incident report on record is of a little girl losing her mental sanity before being stuck in stasis. And we don't know what did it. Hmm. I mean, besides all the torture. I'm sure that had no effect on her mental state whatsoever. Yeah, no emotional neglect, uh, child soldier training regimen, whatever have like negative connotations for a kid's mental health. Everyone just doesn't look at Sebastian over there. Don't touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely going to be fun. I'm very excited about this. I've been thinking about it for too long now. Thank you for the month break. Because now I just have had all the time to come up with things to challenge a bunch of Arbiter level characters. <laughs> He's over there washing dishes, waiting for Suzanne to get home, and suddenly goes, Wait a minute. How can I make that work? Scrubs harder. That was just in the other one. <laughs> I'm just in here like, skill checks. Skill checks <laughs> everywhere. Science, they don't got that. Yes. They're stupid. They're all stupid. The only intelligence skill I have is memorize. That's all I got. Filing, I and got tactics. it. And, and, oh yeah, tactics is intelligence. Anyway. Uh, pity or nah, no one did anything too pitiful this session. I don't know, Finwith can't read half the stuff here. No, you know what? Finwith for not being able to bear shape in here at all. Yep. Can't be chunky here. I lost some here. waste of fucking Xeon when I do have to shift now. Hey, but if we happen to come across a psychic user that also has magic, you can drain the magic from them, though. <laughs> Yeah, if they have any Z on over 10, I can uh, slap it out of them for half of the damage I deal. And eat it. And I have so much Z on region that I easily make up for the uh, the 40 drain a day that it does. Um, Beyond that, any player nominations and or kudos? Sebastian had some character development, allowed somebody to catch him. <laughs> You asked Finn with to catch you. Uh. It's okay. He was just going to do it and then was like, no, I takes off cloak. It, finally, he, uh, he, in his head, being like touched by someone is preferable than fucking face planting it into the ground. 
I do say that's character growth. Take my word. Completely caught the man's off guard. Also, the, uh, like, about ready to just rip the fucking file cabinets off the wall and just burn it all and fin with having to be like, no, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That doesn't seem very you. I'm all for uh, emotional displays, man, but, uh, maybe later. Finroth gets the, the, the brain cell award for having I, the I would, brain cell for the I, uh, day. I'm an electrician, yeah. I was gonna, uh, say, uh, fucking Finn with her being, like, best support. Just being like, okay, you need to think through all this, like, okay, yeah, you're right. Or just making sure he's, like, okay. But I like that, I really like that Sebastian, like, got caught up in that emotional moment, because normally he's very logical, so... He doesn't care if it's distressing because it might be useful. So him burning the files was like a ooh. So that was my kudos to him. I also Take like the brain cell <laughs> another minor kudos to Sebastian for when Anastasia mentioned that no child has to do this, and Sebastian just has this look up moment and stops himself from saying something before going back to what he's doing. That was a good moment. It's just all these nice little, like, like, tiny little red flags, like the little sandwich ones, waiting for the emotional trauma that this building is going to do it unto you. I would say, it's a good kudo, but that's great role-playing. Subtle actions speak more than sometimes words do. And just showing your character's thought process in a moment, even if it's just something as, he looks just straight at the wall like he's going to say something and then goes back to filing. Like, it means, like, he's fighting something. He's, he's, he's arguing with himself in his head. And it's small actions that speak louder. There's so many things in that room that just... He's mentally fighting with right now. <laughs> that and character growth. Oh, uh, he's not a piece of shit. Like, as much anymore. <laughs> he's not gonna say something horrible. He's learning to value at least some people. Uh, and... Congratulations, Devin. Alexi got to use his style. I've used it a couple of times before. I know, it's just rare when it comes up. It's such a minor little flex, but at least you get to have your moment before we go through this fun house hell zone. That's true. I get to break all the laws of physics, and it's going to be great. Oh yeah. That's always fun. And to you, Cameron, for bringing it. us back. That's true. Thank all of you for being here for our for our first session in over a month. It's been a really hard wait. Never do this to me again. I'm Suzanne, sorry. you're stuck with this job forever. And so no promotion for me then <laughs> after this? Unless you get better hours. No. Uh, there's a possibility of working from home if I move up. Ooh. You may have and promotion. So long as I don't have to have a month hiatus again. <laughs> You're killing me. I need Finn with. He generates pure, like, dopamine. Hey, I'm not uh, the only one. Alex is also responsible for this as well. <laughs> well, I mean, Alex, I'm always about two seconds from beating with an iron iron, so... I would like to put another possible player award, or kudos, whichever the DMC is fit, but, uh... Anastasia's, uh liberal use of their ability to kind of like go hey guys look how cool i am see see i got this you cool stuff too <laughs> it's just it's just a very teenager moment and i think it's kind of lost in its subtlety uh but i, I like it a lot very fun edgelord gets to do nothing personnel kid constantly i held back from saying it when you said like i'll tell for mine i was like Ooh, i said it <laughs> It's a good kudo. I think the award right. is the power itself. I I really like, uh, as you can tell, a character with an ability just flippantly using it. Just make basic things a little easier. Casually floats everywhere. As, as you can tell. I'm actually liking it as a player because I can easily just move a bit further than everyone else if need be. Oh yeah, there's a lot of function to it, especially if you're like... Oh, yeah. 
big fucking armor probably can't move like the fastest. It's very handy. It's a good ability. Oh no, he can move very fast. Yours. At least with melee stuff, like you can get up there pretty quickly. Oh yeah, which is going to be super useful in combat, provided there's shadows for him to use. Yeah, if we were in a brightly lit right. building, it'd be great, like, reconnaissance to just shadow warp up somewhere, shadow warp back. I mean, it was a really great ability literally seconds ago before the lights turned on. Yep. I'd like to also say, guys, we can't see in the dark. Please use a torch. <laughs> I forgot no. I have a torch. That's what that <laughs> Or the lantern. The lantern is That's very cool. useful, too. Yeah, Especially I don't have to worry sad. about Finwith, because either he has night vision or he has the lantern. For a while, and I refuse to check my equipment before the game. <laughs> I'm gonna but, you to uh, unless you guys have any other player nominations, uh, how'd you guys enjoy the first session back after a while? A little slow getting right. into it, but it's good to be back. It's very good to be back. Tabletop brings me an immense amount of joy, so... I'm glad I more or less kept the voice and didn't lose it over the course of a month. Uh, that's good, at least. Like, worried you might lose it. But, uh, like I said, kind of pre-stream, taking a big break from, like, a lot of tabletop, it's been really nice, because I feel like I've improved. Like, I am I can play a character a lot better. Uh, like, act through things, speak up more. Like, I feel like I can do that more now that I've had, like, a rest for it. Which is very nice. It's very fun, but like it, it's the kind of mentality of like I can play fucking five or six so characters well, or play uh, like two really well. Like, I can focus a lot more on them. I'm glad it's been good for somebody. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, how do you guys like the facility so far? Feels like a spooky fucking facility. Can't wait to keep going through this and see what else you've come up with. Yeah, man. Especially yeah. if you just break the fucking laws of physics like that. Then hell yeah. Can't wait for you to have to describe a water fountain. Water cooler. <laughs> it's so hard to describe things like how do you describe a server room without saying there's a bunch of uh, hard drives sitting on counters, like cages. I, I I swear it's it's so difficult. Like I've done it a few times, uh, because I made like a few little sci-fi one shots for like D players to be thrown into. Uh my buddy his world is like basically uh our world got nuked uh, like all hell and reset, like magic like high fantasy stuff. And uh he we're and like when we're traveling through ruins, it's like old tech, like that kind of deal. And so he sits there and he's like trying to explain, he's like you see the strange metal skeleton of some unknown How the fuck creature. do I describe what a wallet is? Like, how the fuck do I describe what a keypad is? Like, it's just, he gets that. Like, we found a bank, like, that a guy tried to rob uh, with, like, fucking a bundle of C4. Like, that's something we found. He was trying to explain what the fuck C4 was. He's like, I don't know how to say this. It's C4. There was some game I played where, like, one of the things that you could, like, like, stuff that you could find had weird names for things, like, um... A metal totem or whatever but if you looked in the icon like the picture of it it's very clearly a can opener okay but nobody knows does what... it really well yes they do it they do it too or it's like what the fuck is this thing and See, you'll think longer and you're like this is just a remote am i holding a tv remote right now there's like two games that hopped in my mind but it can't be it it's um there's a game called uh okay i'll, I'll name the one that i actually know off the top of my head i was thinking stalker but that doesn't sound right because you find like weird items, but that's all items that have been touched by like the weird fucking spooky radiation. And the other one is this one where you're inside of a metro station, but it's not metro. Um, speaking of the map, anyway, in, in a sense, uh, I know there's kind of I'm trying to keep it like diverse but not too much where you guys are like oh well what's this room or what's that room or whatever do you guys feel like i should produce a map for you for next time honestly i kind of need it i need something to look at at least a representation so i can orient myself because it's just hearing like 
hallway goes left. There's a T section. That I I cannot like process like that doesn't help. I need a, at least a rough representation. It it would help me be able to not sit there blankly, not knowing which room to go into. All right, I found some of the ones I was thinking. Um, it's not the original one that I was thinking, but it it they do do it too. Is Horizon Zero Dawn? Yes. They have like the little spiral can opener as an ancient toothpick. And you have uh, ancient chimes. It's just a ring of keys. So, games that I, do little stuff like that. I was thinking of the game Under Rail, if any of you have heard of this. No. It's an old, like, style, like, RPG where it's set underground after the world's, like, uninhabitable. And there's two XP systems in the game. First one is uh, uh, basic, just combat, exploring places, get XP. Or there's the like how it's intended to play the game as exploring and finding like weird shit. You get XP for collecting items where you're like, oh, I found a relic of the old world that gives you XP. And those are kind of what it is. Like it's all old world relics that are like old modern stuff. It's pretty this cool. This must be some kind of threat display and. Perhaps these are warning flags, icons of gods, and it's a bunch of shoes with their uh, like tied together, tossed over power lines. It's the game's like at least the world the game makes is super cool. Uh, if you're into old isometric RPGs, then yeah, it's a cool game. Yeah, the hard part with this one is it's not like fun, like old world stuff. This is just like it's, it's like going office. into a busy office. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like. Everything is done for efficiency. Nothing is done, like, nothing is just there just to be there. Besides, like, the potted plants. And I really hope I'm painting a good image of, like, the style of the building. For all intents and purposes, I was in an even more boring-looking version of the hospital that I worked in, so. That's good. That's about, that's about where it should be. But, uh, yeah, and there's going to be a lot of fun, fucked up stuff. And I like how good pacing at the moment, like, there's subtle creepiness. Then you guys just come to a room with guys whose heads have exploded. Yeah, that's just kind of horrifying. Kind of like, does somebody shoot their heads, or can one of you guys... The scariest part Asking is for a friend. Terrible. Yeah. The friend is me. Yeah, I don't want my head to explode. Yeah. I don't think limb regeneration covers that one because I'll be dead. Also, my uh, my experience is at 1776, which is not a very often thing that you get to see. Sure. I don't know. I, I hope you guys like it because the rest of this place is only going to get prospectively better or worse. <laughs> well, if we keep up with the funny laughs of haha gravity, Ben with will think it's very amusing. But hopefully uh, next week we'll play a little longer. Remember, try to be here a little before four, because... I've set my alarm with enough time to wake up. Yeah. If well, also, can. just we need to start as soon as we can, because yeah. Yeah. otherwise we have a short session, and there's nothing that can be done. This is this is a three-hour session with like a little bit extra, so... I don't I don't do anything Monday, so I'll, I'll, I'll be here. Yeah, I have the day off, so it's okay. And maybe we'll have a kitty out here next time that's oh, yeah it's a dream we just gotta adjust first so we're gonna go ahead and end the stream for now uh thank you to my players for coming out and playing here today i appreciate you all and credit crip is gonna be really fun we're gonna be taking on i don't know probably the next half i would say we're about halfway through credit crip so far so cameron sighing at the power <laughs> curve oh, that yeah, we've we're taken 18 yes I'm just kidding. God, no. I'll probably just stop loving you guys at some point. 
So long as I keep finding fun things to turn into. It's really hard to anticipate, especially with character arcs and the like. But I would say at least another 20 sessions. And uh, also, if you aren't aware already, we will be playing Pathfinder 2nd Edition tomorrow, 4 p.m. And I'll be doing a zero session for another Pathfinder game that I'm starring, uh, starting on Wednesday. So if you want to see the character creation process and are interested in uh, kind of what process I go through for getting players started, you can tune in then. Again, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, yeah, uh, beyond that, I guess we're just going to say goodnight, everyone. Bye-bye.